Good evening, everybody. It's almost an agreement time. Whoa. Come on, do the intro, dude. <laughs> I'm we're, <laughs> we're almost an agreement. Uh, almost an agreement at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. Um, you can go to our website, almost an agreement.com. While you're at almost an agreement.com, you can check out all of our episodes. As well as you can go to any of your favorite podcast providers and get all our episodes. While you're at any of these places, please like, share, friend, retweet, uh, subscribe, follow. Um, I don't know what other, you know, whatever the terms are. Helps Thumbs people, up. helps get the word out. Um, had a couple of really good episodes this week. Um, Jennifer Owen really uh, landed with a lot of people. Either she's really popular or we struck a nerve or something. Um, but uh, the. Uh, Early voting is wrapped up for the primaries. The actual primary is coming up Tuesday, so if you haven't voted and you're a city candidate or city person, uh, almostanagreement.com slash cityelections21. Go there and get my cheat sheet for your primary. Um, but, uh, yeah, primary ends on Tuesday. We'll, I might try to put it together a uh, primary summary breakdown show post uh, in the evening Tuesday night. But, anyway, we're almost agreement. Here we go. Good intro, buddy. Nice work. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. I try. That's why you're here. You're so, uh, here. Let's get uh, interest together. lazy people like myself that that missed the early voting. Correct. When is our next chance? Uh, primary is Tuesday. Tuesday at your at your registered voting location. So you can't right. just go. It's not the early voting locations. It's wherever you're registered to vote. Right. I think it's seven A to seven P. I think. I gotta, um, I gotta remember where the hell I put my uh, voting voter registration. You don't need card. it as long as you know where you're going. You just okay. need. You, I mean, I know where you I'm don't going. technically need your ID, but your ID is really the only thing you kind of need. Yeah. Just yeah, if you have your, just no, take thought, your. I thought it was easier if I go in with my voter ID card. No, it's the same. They just look you up by your I was, name. I thought I, that's what I brought in for my last general election last fall. No, your IDs, your regular ID is fine. Okay, okay. And even if you don't have that one, you can fill out the indigent voter card thing, and it's a big thing um, for your primary. So who are you gonna vote for? Holt? No, not Holt. Uh, Tommy, David Hayes, or um, Elizabeth Murphy. I'm liking Tommy. Don't vote for Tommy. Okay, I won't. Uh, and I'm not saying to that you, I'm not saying that you're like Tommy. Tommy will be. Tom, Tommy will make it to the primary. So who do you want Tommy to run against? Is really the question to me. Yeah. Yeah. My second choice would be David Hayes. Okay, because I'm curious. I mean, I, yeah. like, God damn it, dog! The fuck is your problem? We stupid. What is your deal tonight, dude? I'm really. You're not allowed to be in podcast anymore. I'm gonna have to kick you out. Um. I mean, I think that's the reality. I mean, that's my prediction anyway. I don't think Miss Murphy is gonna get through this primary. I think she has a little bit of a, a yellow stain on her record that she's not getting away from, um, and that's gonna be <laughs> the way it works. Uh, but um, you know, I don't know. I don't know shit about David Hayes. What do you know about David Hayes? I know he's been around a while. I've heard, I've heard the name for years. I mean, that that makes him a valid candidate. Well, I mean, he, he's been on the, I guess, political scene for years. Yeah, I mean, he ran he he ran in the special against Tommy when Tommy got the seat because Tommy's yeah. never won an election. People don't remember that part. He didn't win that seat. Um, he was uh, appointed to by the city council because Stephanie Welch took an office when um, yeah. Kincannon yeah. took over. So. Um, that's the only thing that kind of gives me a little pause about Tommy. I think Tommy Smith's going, <laughs> motherfucker. God damn dog. I mean, thankfully to this podcast, I've actually got to hear and listen to Tommy Smith. Right. Um, you know, and I mean, he seems like a pretty small guy. I mean, I got no, I got no issues with him. I'm not saying you shouldn't vote for him. Right. If you want to vote for him, I'm just saying, I feel like he's pretty clearly going to make it through the primary. To me, it's a better question of who you want to see him running against. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess uh, that's a question, I suppose, for something to talk about. Like, um, you know, is it better for you, the candidate, to have a – and I'm not I – don't, I, I don't, it's not fair. I'm not trying to imply a, a specific of this race, just in a general scheme, not this particular race. But would you be better off as a constituent – to have two candidates that are closer together with more with some more nuanced difference in your general, or two candidates that are way different in your general, you get know what I'm saying? It's all going to depend on perspective. Right, but I'm no, but for you as a as a constituent, for you right. voting, right? So you have you have like you know some years there are like five or six people that primary, right? 
Would it I be mean, better? I guess on the, on the gratification scale, it would be easier to have two candidates that are closer. Right, because if you, lose, right, if you lose, the other one's not yeah, the it's, worst. It's, a less, thing, it's right. less of a loss. I suppose, but I guess the, the, I would think it'd be better to have them closer as well because then it's going to force them to be more honest on the issues that they're running on. Because if it's, you know, if I beat somebody that's diametrically opposite to me, I just have to not do the opposite of right. what of what I said I was going to do. Right. Where so if a, it's a somebody that's... idea and you've got two differing, two right. closely differing ways of how to have that good idea that, you know, you yeah. would agree on that, that good idea, but as far as how to get there. Right. I think, I think that would be a, that would be a benefit to you as a voter to have candidates that were a little closer together on, right. on, on stuff. And it's or just kind of like, on the ultimate, ultimate goal right. or main issue. Um, but, uh, you know, go into, uh, almost an agreement.com slash city elections 21. Let's pull up David Hayes' website. See what, see what we can learn about David Hayes. Um, actually, I think, let me see. I mean, I did a short version of what his website says. David's top issues are affordable housing for all, a living wage for all, safe and healthy communities for all, democracy for all. Um, you know, and again, for my whole thing. It's very inclusive. Okay, I agree with that. But for my whole thing, um, you know, what does that mean inside the capabilities of the job? Like, you know, uh, affordable income programs, affordable housing programs or whatever are within the city council's purview. I'm down, I, I mean, that's within the job. So to break down whether he is capable of attacking the issue before we break down whether we agree or disagree with his attack of the issue. So to my understanding, there is, you know... Um, uh, affordable housing is within the city council's purview of, of right. things that they can do some stuff with. Right. There's a lot they can do yes, as far um, as permitting and right. I'm, I don't know if the city council can do anything about a city minimum wage separately from the state. I know that like Seattle or something a few years back, they went up to $15 an hour way before anybody else did, but it was just yeah. the city of Seattle. It wasn't the whole state of Washington. All right. I don't know if that's something that's in our charter here or not. Um, they could probably implement it at least for city employees. I suppose, but that's not for all. That's for city employees, right? I mean, I would, I would, as far as like what what we understand their jurisdiction to be, right? right. Um, safe and healthy communities. Uh, safe would be police, which the um, police and fire, which is within the city's purview. Healthy, I'm not sure. I don't know how much. Um, the city council can do with health issues. Um, Up the health department's budget, but it's county. It's county office. I don't know that the city contributes to the county health That's department. True. Sure. Um, I mean, there's like the city inspections for like health inspections for businesses and stuff like that. That's is a that, city. Is office. that not a county thing? As far as like restaurant inspections, I think there's a city. I think there's a city. I think there's both actually. I think the city okay. and county both have their own health inspectors for restaurants and stuff like that. Okay. I don't think that's part of the health department per se. I that's don't know that true. for a fact, yeah. but I'm pretty sure that's part of inspections, which is each, each municipality, city and county have their own, um, have their own health inspectors in that department. And then democracy, 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 democracy. democracy. I don't know why I struggle with that word. Democrata. I don't know I, where is, is, Democratis. is, is there an argument that in parts of district one, there's not democracy for everybody that lives there? Don't think there's too much of a dispute against it. I mean, I, I, I'm not really sure. That may have just been like a, a nice little closing argument. And democracy for all. But again, I'm just saying, like on on the criteria of, I want to know what in. Oh, excuse me. Um, I want to know what you're running on. And justice for all. And I want to know if it's within your the purview of your office. Because, again, right. I think that's, this is one of the biggest. I know I've told you this a thousand times. I know everybody listening has heard this a thousand times, all seven or eight of you now. Um, I think one of the biggest problems we have as a community, and I don't think Knoxville is unique in it, but I think one of the biggest problems we have as a nation, small communities within the nation, is we don't know what the job is. And I think it's important that we spend some time trying to work out what the job is while we're electing these people, because I think that some of these people running for the office don't know what the job is. And for someone to run on 
you know, because again, so what I did on my sheet here is I just took their website and I pulled the top three or four points right. off their website and condensed it. So this isn't me making it up. This isn't me um, projecting onto what I've heard about persons. This is me pulling from their website, doing a shortened version of it. You know, maybe in the future when I get better at it, and I know for a fact that democracy for all is not within the purview of the city council, because I don't think it is, to be honest. <clears throat> I mean, assuming democracy means election items. I mean, if the, if democracy nice. means, right, if democracy to him means that um, everybody in District 1 has a voice when it comes to the baseball stadium issue, and everybody gets to talk to him about whether or not we're going to get a baseball stadium, because that would be within his job. Right. Um, if that's what he means by democracy, I haven't been able to ask him. He hasn't given me even a, sorry, I won't talk to you. He just ignores me whenever I reach out to him. Um, so I would like to follow up with that point just to try to get an understanding of what he means by democracy for all because election-wise, they the city council can't do shit other than they're going to be redistricting and they, have, they get to sign off on their own redistricting. That's the only thing election-wise that the city is going to do here in the short term. Or maybe he means by democracy for all, he would p push more ballot initiatives. More major things should be on the ballot instead of being... More public input, input on things. Well, public input is not democracy. It's true. A vote is democracy. I'm just saying, that's, again... Um, you know, and so, and then, I don't know, while we're staying in, in one, um, you know, Elizabeth Murphy is running on safe communities, job creation, housing, and homelessness. So again, she's on the, uh, you know, some some level of housing, affordable housing, which again is within purview, safe communities, uh, job creation. I mean, okay, so for my my checklist, at least everything on her top issues list is within the purview of the job. Um, Tommy's is a vibrant first district, which, you know, that's just a really flowery term. These are still your your summations. I mean, it's, I, I, this is me pulling directly off their site. Like, okay, so for David Hayes. Top issues is affordable housing, living wage, saving health communities, democracy for all. So I go to David Wage's page, David Hayes's page, and it says issues: a living wage, affordable housing, saving health communities, democracy. Right. I mean, it's literally that's that that is how hard I worked. Okay, so democracy for all, people's budget, community control of development, community oversight of the police department. I like that one. Yeah, he'd be. He, I bet you he's on board with my ACLU bullshit. Most definitely. Um, environment for all, safety from all violence, health care and healthy food, social services, and community organization. I like it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, social services, I don't strong know what environment. Local, what is strong it? local economy for all. I, I like that. What does environment for all mean? That's kind of, yeah, it's kind of a vague. Like we can use, like, everybody has access to some of the parks and stuff because district one's got probably the most like green space of any of the districts in the city. I think so. For sure. I mean, I is down there and, um, was it Fort, uh, Fort Dickerson park, Fort, Fort Dickerson park. And you got all the different like stuff. Green in space, the, I mean, that's a civil war. Yeah. But there's, I mean, the fort, quarry and basically. all that stuff, there's, there's a good bit of woods and stuff around there. Yeah. Definitely a lot of trails. Yeah. I mean, West Knoxville just has like pockets of parks. Yeah, and most of West Knoxville parks are like park parks where it's like swing sets and soccer fields. Not. Well, you've got the whole like mix of Carl Callen parks. That's not in the city. Or sorry. Right. Yeah. Sorry. City ends at Mississippi. Right. Like Lakeshore, but that's not a you know that's a park park. That's not a green space park. Anyway, not the point. Yeah. I'm just pushing back on you saying this is my summation of them. No, it's literally. Me right. pulling phrases off of their website, I would call I would call it near near plagiarism. I, I, what I, I did, I didn't know if you were, I didn't realize you were just taking headlines from their thing. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would I would call it almost plagiarism, okay. but not quite. Okay. Um. Point taken. So anyway, like for me, I would like you to vote for David Hayes or Elizabeth Murphy, just because I would like to see I'd like to see who you think would be a better candidate to run against Tommy Smith because I think Tommy's got I think Tommy's got I think Tommy's going to win the primary, not just get through the primary. And I think he's going to win it pretty strongly. But um, I think there's... I, I, he's definitely got some bigger signs from what I've seen. Tommy does? Yeah. 
I mean, if sign size matters, then Kim Smith's got a good shot at District 2. Very possible. And, I've seen, and, definitely uh, seen some of those. And uh, uh, what? You, wow, I just blanked out his name. Um, uh, Clinaris is winning District 4. If, if number and size of signs counts, Clinaris is murdering District 4. Because every time I've driven in and around or near District 4, I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen a single Jen McMahon sign in District Four. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I only go through a couple parts of District Four throughout the week for work. But um, anyway, it's fun, you know, because District Two doesn't really matter, District Three doesn't matter, and then District Six is District Six. But I mean, I think it's the same thing. I think I think it's Hayes and Smith. I think it's. Um, Quinn Harris and Ryder. I think it's Gwen and Harper. I think that's... And then the other two races are head-to-head already anyway. Uh, but yeah, so Tuesday, all day. Oh, wait, since I'm on my own cheat sheet, let's all go. Day. Let's go in here. Um, primaries August 31st. Go to knoxcounty.org slash elections. do 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 do, do. Where can I vote? Nah. That's not helpful. This the point places photo ID. Yeah, it's, probably t- it's probably trying to tell you your individual place to vote. I'm not telling you all the polling locations. So. Yeah, I know. I was just trying. I will. I wanted to. I was trying to find real quick what the hours were for. Um. For voting. For voting on Tuesday. I can't type with a taped up finger. Final, final. Ooh, we'll pull that up here in a second. That's early voting. Early voting stats. But just exit polls. I only said chart we looked at last week. Yeah, two weeks ago. What do you mean two weeks ago? They just had early voting started. Oh no, they've been, it's they they've put it every day. Uh, they put it uh, they put it out every day after, um, after whatever. Oh shit, this isn't going the way I wanted it to. All right, anyway, so we'll skip ahead to that. Early voting statistics. Oh, that's right, because, um. Matt Shears takes yeah. these numbers and he has a little flow chart that he built in Express or in Excel. Um, it's real as in Excel and that gives a little chart. Um, must be lazy. But uh, I mean, the, the the bottom line is, and I don't think it's changed, um, we're less than 2019. We're more than 2017. We're the, the, all the early voting days, except for one, I think, have been right in the middle. Yeah. And there was one that matched it, and that was the day it was pouring ass rain. Creatures of habit. Yeah, you know, but it, but the question is, what does it say? What does an increased turnout say on a similar election? And realistically, if Matt remembered correctly when we were talking about it, so we have gone up. Right. There's more. There's been more early voting this this election than in the what is the comparable of 2017. Right. The, the off season, whatever. Right. Because the 2019 has the mayor's race. Yeah. And so it gets better turnout, which is logical. All right. Um, but the 2017, all five districts that were running had at least three candidates. One of them had like six. So I would think with having more candidates or having more, having all the districts have actual real primaries, Versus District 2 and District 3 right now, it's not really a primary because there's only two people running. Right. If I'm a District 2 or 3 voter, why would I go vote? I have one item on the ballot that changes nothing. Other than this, so I can get my sticker. Yeah. Because everybody loves their sticker. Got to take a selfie, put that on the Facebook. Right. I'm going to put that sticker right in the middle of my mask and take that selfie. No, I'm not because I can't vote because I'm not a city <laughs> resident. But... but. Um, so to me, it, to to me as the uh, super amateur political analyst in Knoxville politics, to me that says that there is a significant increase in voter turnout, not just by the numbers, but 
Uh, uh, I'd I'd wonder percentage-wise if it's gone up in comparison to increase in population size. No, absolutely not. No. I mean, there are days, there are, I think the average, I'd, we'd have to, I'd have to pull up Matt's version of it, but I think the average per day was like 70. And when you're talking, some days are like 240. Like, we're like, went from a 170 or a 180 to a 240 or 250. Yeah. I mean, that's, we're talking a 45% increase. Right. We have not had a 45% increase in population. Yeah. Over, uh, and so I think it's I, I don't think it's just a population change I think that's a little bit of it I think the one factor that I uh, will give Matt his expertise on that I don't know how to factor in in my mental math on it is that left leaning persons tend to be more down with the early voting and the absentee voting and more the right leaning persons want to vote day up yeah. and so at least in Matt's opinion this higher turnout is good for the left-leaning candidates. I don't want to say his candidates, even though they are, but he doesn't like to say they're his candidates because it's a nonpartisan election. Right. Which the GOP made the news for a number of items on that. Um, oh, did you hear the bad news? The fucking, oh, shit. Oh, time out. Breaking news. The U.S. airstrike targets Islamic State member in Afghanistan. All right, we're back to bombing Afghanistan, everybody. <laughs> Fuck nice. me. When do we stop? I mean, I think I don't think we've done it since May. Or no, since November. What? Since the fucking whatever deal that Trump put together on the... Uh, do, we, do we stop drone strikes? I thought we did. I thought that was uh, the idea. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not 100%. We're always doing random drone strikes. Uh, in, I you mean, you hear about them like a little blip. Around the world, yes, but I'm just saying in Afghanistan particularly. Right. This was the... the really, uh, it's just... It goes back and forth between like a spot in Africa or... Right. Here's my super cynic take on the, on the breaking news um, yeah. is that... Some poor goat farmer just got blasted out of the sky, and we're going to say that was the guy that put together the attack on the Marines in Kabul yesterday. Uh, and that's our, you know, I mean, and honestly, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. This like, this just feels so desperate to keep us there. The media makes it sound so desperate that we have to stay, we have to stay. And I wish we've that... We've committed to leave. I mean, even by... I mean... I, I, I agree. I, look, I, as as somebody who's been a strong non Biden fan for the last year and a half, I'm super excited. Like I again, apparently it's reference Matt Shears night. I told Matt earlier to, yesterday. I was like, if Biden keeps us up on, and if Biden keeps us up, doesn't start a new war, I might vote for Biden in 2024, if he you know lives that long and all those other <laughs> stupid jokes. But I mean, realistically, like this is the kind of shit because this is the this is the kind of shit that we haven't had a president president willing to do. In our lifetime. Because this is the media, the national security state, the um, the military industrial complex are all leaning as hard as they can to make this the worst possible, possible political decision Biden has ever made. Right. Is to follow through on getting us the fuck out of there. And he's still doing it. And it sucks and it's ugly and he's getting all sorts of shame from all sorts of places. I can't wait. For you guys listening, this will be up after... Um, but tomorrow when I have the GOP guys on, um, tomorrow when I have the GOP guys on, I guarantee you they're going to start railing on Biden for his stupid ass uh, evacuation of Afghan policy and this, that, and the other. And it's like, listen, guys, I don't give a shit. Nobody's going to do. Nobody, nobody could have done it better or worse. It doesn't matter. This was going to be a mess, no matter how it happened. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm not excited that 13 Marines died. I'm not proud of that fact. I, I don't enjoy it. But to be honest, we haven't had an, a U.S. casualty in Afghanistan this year. What do you think happens if we stay another year? What do you think is happening? I mean, what, what if we stay another month, two months, three months, when the Taliban doesn't have, when the Taliban basically says, we had a deal that said you're getting the fuck out of here. We haven't killed your people because you said you're getting out. Well, you didn't get out, so we're going to start killing your people. You think by the end, if we would, if we were still in Afghanistan come December, you think 13 more guys would be dead? I do. I think well over that. So again, I'm not happy that the 13 Marine died, and one of them apparently was a local kid. Yeah, I saw that. A Gibbs kid. Which sucks. Fucking sucks. I hate it. I hate that he was there. He shouldn't have been there in the first place. Yeah. Lone, lone suicide bomber, apparently. Right. You know, lone, yeah. Whatever. 
It's, I mean, it sucks. I mean, it's not whatever. I'm sorry. It's a big fucking deal. But it is not big enough for us to spend another 2,500 lives and $2 trillion on trying to fix something that we can't. So kudos to Biden on that, on that take right there. I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I, 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 he's stayed solid and I, I can't, I can't appreciate that enough. I didn't expect, I mean, yeah, I bought Halliburton stock when he, t- when he, when he won the election thinking we we're going to get another war and I'm still might be right. So don't, don't, I'm not counting out, get making some money. Private contractors buy that shit too. Oh yeah. I mean, fuck the, uh, the Pentagon, like, so here's the deal. Here's the real fucking problem with this Afghan situation to me is this started under Trump, this plan, this idea, the deal that Trump made with the Taliban that Obama decided, or that, fuck, I've done this a couple times. I apologize that Biden, um, said that he was going to stick to has been in place for a while but the armed forces didn't feel like it was going to happen they weren't acting like it was going to happen I saw a list, I don't know if it's real about this amount of shit we left there like drones yeah. Blackhawks, armored Humvees regular Humvees fucking trucks and tanks and all sorts of shit that we left there that are now in Taliban control um, and it's like well if you knew like what is it? Uh, was 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 at the shop yesterday with Devin? Possibly. Um, I was like, if 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 you're a kid and your parents say we're moving next year, yeah, right, we're we're gonna move. Um, Dad got a new job, Mom got a new job. We're gonna move over to this other city, or, or we're gonna buy a bigger, better house, whatever it is. We're gonna move in six months. You know, so start packing your stuff up, start getting the things that you don't use, but you want to take the new house into a place or whatever. All of a sudden, the moving truck shows up and you haven't even started yet. Is that mom's fault or dad's fault that you didn't prepare as you were told to, to do so? Or is that your fault as the individual who was told to do a thing? The analogy being that you, the kid in the house, are the armed forces mm-hmm. and the mom and dad are the presidents at the time. Right. At letting you know what's going to happen. Prepare for the thing that's going to happen. And then when you don't, you can't get pissed off when you leave all your shit behind. It's not a it, – it's, it's not – I'm not saying it's not Biden's fault on some level. There are some things that I'm sure – truly squarely fall on his lap but on the grand scheme of things to me it does not seem that any stretch of the imagination that the armed forces thought they were actually going to leave i remember seeing that some footage of from uh syria when we when we pulled out that there were bases with little mini fridges stocked with like coca-cola bottles it was like shot from you know whatever, I mean, that's, whatever power like came into it like taking footage of it like hey we got I got a fridge full of Coca Cola. Thanks. I mean, if you're gonna leave something behind, I guess that that right, right. 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 I just I don't. Know. I just, I'm so like. Yeah, yeah, man. That's that's reasonable. Like, all right, you know, we've got a little bit of time to get out. Like, it's not worth us paying the money to box that up, put it on a fucking truck, and ship it out or whatever. I mean, you know, Humvees. Like, right. did, did someone do a cost-benefit analysis of how much it was going to cost them to send it to an airport? I, see, that's to, all right. That, that's go ahead, sir. No, I mean that's what I was saying. Like, no, I think I think the thought was Biden's not going to make us leave. Yeah, I think that's what the thought was. We're gonna we're gonna do what we do. I figure someone just looked at it logistically. No, we're gonna do what we you do. Know, like, oh, and shit, we we forgot like under this timeline, like what it's going to take for us to get all this shit out. Like, fuck it, just leave it. Right. No, I, I don't think so. I think I, I truly think it's they thought that they were going to figure out a way to stay. Yeah. I think the, the 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 military contractors and stuff like that, the guys that make the big money off of this kind of shit, they thought that they could pull the whatever the thing was to keep us there. And I mean, full tinfoil hat. This is completely conspiracy theory, zero evidence to it. There's part of me that thinks this uh, lone bomber was some CIA plant was an intentional thing to uh, to re-escalate yeah. it to force us to stay. Again, totally making shit up. I have no proof of that. I mean, even after this, <clears throat> Biden is still saying that we're still sticking to our timeline. I agree, and I give Biden all the kudos in the world for sticking to his guns on that. Right. But uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility that the CIA could have done something like that. Whether it was some guy that was an informant for them, that was doing stuff in the field over there, that was helping them out over there, that they pushed to and they pushed to, and they're like, hey, go do this. <laughs> To what end? To keep the war going so that the people that make the money can keep the fucking making the money. Yeah. No, why? We've never done anything. The, 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 the alphabet agencies have never done like things like this before. 
I mean, that's the argument for why Trump didn't get us out while he was in office. Yeah, but that's usually with some involvement with the executive branch. I mean, I, I guess. I mean, Golf of Tonkin being the time that the executive mm-hmm. branch said no to one of their bad, their crazy ideas. Yeah. You know, then that guy got shot. I'm not saying they're related, but it's possible mm-hmm. that they weren't happy that they didn't have a president that would go along with their fucking crazy plans. I mean, the, again, the argument to me that why Trump didn't do it while he was in office is because the complex put the full weight politically on Trump. Right. And he's a pushover. I mean, that's AC. AC should be getting here. So that's Roddy's going to freak out when AC shows up. We can't see him, him in a minute. Uh, we're going to pause it for two seconds and get AC set up. I know. Okay, thanks for that quick pause, everybody. We're coming back with uh, AC's in the room. Yay! Wee. I haven't seen AC in like a month of Sundays, as this praise goes. It's been a while. Um, busy, busy saving lives. Yeah, people um, that don't that are too stupid to get vaccinated. Yeah. Um, I don't know what well, we were talking about. Um, Af- we were talking about Afghanistan and Afghanistan. shit right before you came in. If you want to jump in on that, or we okay. can move off it. We can, whatever. I was, uh, I don't know. I was, I was fully conspiracy theorizing that the uh, the bomber was a CIA plant, but it's full on conspiracy theory. Like completely making shit up, probably. But and uh, you know, and I guess for for your sake, I mean, I'm I'm super pleased with Biden's tact on this whole thing. Wait a minute, say that again. I am super pleased. No, before that, with Biden's tact. No, 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 before that. Well, I don't remember what I said. Before. Something about to your point or something. So yeah, something that I'm sure you'd appreciate. Something. Why that, would I appreciate that? Because I think you. I'm pretty sure you like Biden. I I uh I. I isn't isn't that just the pro binary shit again? I don't know. It is. I mean, like I, I I'm not. I don't remember how to talk to you, so I'm got. I'm trying to get. You don't remember how to talk minutes. to me. What is it's that? Gonna take a minute, couple minutes. What sketch the hell out. does that even mean? <laughs> I, but but like, just because you uh, may have voted for somebody doesn't mean that they are without criticism. I agree. So and I'm saying just because. Well, I guess what I guess my point then was because I was very critical of Biden in the in the. Um, in the election portion of things, I'm not too big to not to. Or I'm not too small that I'm not willing to say, "Hey, I like what he's doing on this thing." Which part? The fact that he's just pulling out no matter what. Yeah, I like that he's full on against uh, the entirety of the the media, throwing every excuse to stay at him. It's like, nope, we're out of here. Especially with the events of yesterday. It's not an accident that uh, the military-industrial complex is uh, massive, and at the same time, so is our media. Okay. Uh, the lines that blur those two uh, are are a little blurrier than we care to admit. For sure. I mean, like I always make my joke, and I know I've said this a thousand times, is six thirty clo- six six thirty in the evening. You're watching NBC Nightly News. Watch the commercials. Like, pay attention to what the commercials are. It's all. It's it's big pharma ads. And every once in a while, and my my favorite's always there's a there's always like a Boeing ad, or um, a Lockheed Martin ad somewhere in, randomly. And it's like why the like realistically why on the planet is Lockheed Martin advertising on to anybody in the public? Like who who out there is going? Oh, I mean I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Delta exec. I was just catching up on the news. We need some new airplanes. That reminded me. No, that's like, that's, that... that's not why they're advertising on there. Why are they advertising on there? They're advertising on there because they want the news to do what they want the news to do. I can't imagine another reason. Uh, well, the other reason is uh, um, it's it's positive. Uh, it's it's positive people attention. They're not trying to sell anything except for um, um, what's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for here? Exposure. Positive exposure. They're not selling anything. I mean, there's not a product that they're looking to sell. Yeah, Matt, so there's, there's the some, average. There's some instances where, you know, the companies paid them for ads, and they're like, they paid us for the ads. Like, we got to put this ad in there. Mm-hmm. They paid us for so many slots during so many times during. I agree, this but time if you're if, if you're Lockheed Martin, why are you putting the ad out? Positive exposure. That's what I'm saying. But I mean, you're, like, but again, you're, if you're Lockheed you're, Martin, you're buying, how many people know what you actually? You're do? buying exposure. Uh, that's not the point, though. The the the, the point is. If there's ever a push against the, I mean, how else military, do you get people to know you? Well, yeah, that too. But um, if there's ever a push against the military industrial complex, that's right, right. I think we're saying the same thing. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I think because they want because because Lockheed Martin wants 
NBC News, in in my scenario at least, to at least think twice before running an ad or running a story that might be negative to something that they actually make money off of. No, I, I'm going a step further and saying I don't. If I if I'm Lockheed Morgan, I don't care if they do because I've already got positive exposure from the people that are watching the the news over the last. 15 years and so even if this one particular ad is run that's anti-Boeing or anti-Lockheed Martin it's not going to matter because I've essentially gaslighted this populace for the last 10 or 15 right. years about positive news and so it okay. doesn't fucking matter that's, that's, I what, I, you, yeah. that's what I'm saying I mean, it's, still part of the, it's still part of the thing to keep the machine rolling I sure. guess is the point where I think sure. we're both making it a little bit differently but same, same, same premise Yeah. and so I, yeah because I think I think um, it's like two or three weeks ago when we first started pulling out, we did our show, and I I mentioned to the guys at the time, I was like, has anybody else seen how much news coverage is all of a sudden about, oh, whoa, is Afghanistanis? Like, I mean, it was the, bad the, a month ago. Right. The, that's that's, that's my ago. point. It's like all of a sudden it's the plight of the Afghan people, which it's been the plight of the Afghan people for 20 years, but now it's all of a sudden like top story, top story, top story. And it's like, why all of a sudden now? And again, I mean, I, I, again, I'm agreeing with you 100%. I think there's a there's an, a vested interest in in war for a lot of people because it makes a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm I'm very pleased with Biden for saying, no, we're we're done, we're not doing this. Not that it matters. Pentagon's back, got a bigger budget this year than they had last year, knowing that the war was ending. Theoretically, I still argue. Like we, uh, Sam and I were talking before we got here. Like, um, I saw a list, I don't know how accurate it is, of all the equipment we left there, like helicopters and jeeps and all that shit that all the Taliban has now, um, is that uh, my argument would be, I don't, I don't think the Pentagon, per se, thought we were actually going to leave. I don't think they, pre- they were preparing to leave in the sense that they were starting to pack shit up and get it out. I think they were like, no, we'll talk Biden into keeping us here, so we're not going to pack it up and move it out and then bring it all back in. Uh, that's awfully presumptuous, and it's also assuming that there's only one or two or five people in a room that has the final say on that. There, there are more than just a small handful of people that know that we have military equipment there. No, I agree, but I'm just saying, like for like as it as it rolls downhill through the hierarchy of the military, it's like, you know, why isn't the you know logistics team X out there in Kabul packing their shit up and getting it ready to go? Well, uh, you don't even have to pack it up; just blow it up. Something, right? Uh, so, so, um. I want that an- that question answered. Right, I agree. Um, but there's got to be a reason. Otherwise, I mean, just think about some of the dumb shit that we have done. We like shooting shit and blowing shit up. How cool would it be to just be like, you know what? I've been in the middle of this fucking Humvee for the last two years and six deployments. How fun would it be to just fucking roast some marshmallows on this burning <laughs> ass? You know what I mean? Well, but like, but the so, logic would be that we go out and do a hunting trip and then just leave the camper there, leave all our guns there, and go home. Like that's what's ha- that's what happened. All right, well, are the I don't know if the are the guns were the guns left too. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Okay. I mean, again, I don't know how accurate the list was I, that I saw. I did but. read there was one like I guess popular like Facebook or whatever social media post about that was showing a picture of like Afghanis in like U.S. military things. It was uh, alluded to be that it was more recent, but it was some picture from like a year or two ago. Right. I'm not saying like there's not we don't still have things there. I mean, but I, that I don't know. Right. But anything, anything of real, uh, I mean, I guess that, and again, going on full, uh, conspiracy theory version of it, the reality probably, I mean, for the complex's sake of it, you now have a better armed enemy to go back and fight later. So you can make another bigger, better war in the future. Right. For, but sit down, we, we probably sold, you know, like the Afghan military, much of our, that's true. Older, well, that, uh, 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 older equipment that, that's now been seized by the Taliban or whoever. Right, but that's I mean, it's not sold. It we gave it to them, and we've that that's that was Biden's whole point in his first. I think it was his first major speech. Sure, after it was both, I'm sure we we sold them throughout the years. I'm sure it was we a, we, we trained and equipped. Them. We trained and equipped. We trained and equipped. Right, their army. Right. And I mean, equipped means right. and equipment. I doubt we gave them that much shit for free. I don't. In the past 20 years, do you think we've just given them all that much equipment? Yeah, I don't think that we've... Uh, it may not have been monetary stuff, but it could have been secrets. It could have been um, locations of important people. There was some sort of exchange. Some or, mineral rights for some random oh, place. I'm, I'm sure there was yeah. monetary. Yeah. Uh, so, something exchanged hands. I don't I don't believe that we're just going over there giving AK-47s and Humvees. Like, I think that's that's uh, far right-wing fucking Newsmax bullshit. I mean, well, like, okay, so if the, if the narrative of we are trying to nation build is the truth. 
Which it's not. It was, but okay. I'm just saying if the, if that yeah, if that's I, I if think the, it was a mixture of both. I'm yeah. saying if the if that's the narrative, and we want to we want to have them arm and protect themselves so that we can get the fuck out of here. Then it's an investment in our ability to get out to give them the equipment. Right. Um, well, not to give them, but it's, give them the opportunity to train and equip them. I mean, there's, 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 give them the opportunity a, to, to buy. It. Yeah. Yeah, there's an exchange of some sort. There's, 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 there's I mean, I sorry. obviously don't know, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's pretty fucking nuts. Which part? The whole fucking thing. The fact that it was 20 years. The fact that right. now that we're finally fed up with it. Not that we're finally fed up with it. I mean, again, I've referenced Matt Shears a thousand times this episode. I'll do it one more time. Um, Matt Shears made a good point when he was on last weekend. We were talking about it. Uh, that there was no, there was there was push against having any congressional um vote to continue the war powers act wouldn't matter anyway what do you mean i mean it's, it's uh, the war war powers act is in to keep us there in afghanistan it wouldn't matter i mean i mean because essentially as i understand it the war powers act gave the president the ability to do the thing and but it, that's but that's semantics at that point but at least it's it's it, i guess it is yes i agree it's semantics but it, it would also have a there, there it, would, it would add a political layer to the push for and against. I, I mean, it'd be at least a campaign point for people to be like, you know, we had the War Powers Act vote and I voted against it this time. And I mean, sh- uh, sure, but why bother with that? At, I mean, the, the election is not tomorrow. I mean, you do that in the election year. You don't do yeah, that. But I mean, how many election tomorrow. years did we have over the last twenty years? I don't know what that has to do. I mean, there's plenty of people that got elected on and off in 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 the whole during the whole process that could have used that as a political point if it ever came up. But it, again, according to Matt, at least it was actively avoided. There was conversation about it, and then it was pushed. Well, there was a—I mean, uh, who knew that this was that this was going to be the reaction to it? We picked other things to vote on versus just what was going on in Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that too. I mean, what what else are you gonna? I mean, like, there's a ton of stuff to misdirect, right? The the average voter, and just because they haven't done it doesn't mean that you know it wasn't a winnable strategy. I would argue that it isn't, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Anyway, which is why it wasn't done. Go Biden! Yay! Get us out of there. I I don't I, I don't you know I, I don't I don't dig my heels into whether or not Biden is you know amazing or not. I I, I can criticize him for X Y and Z and still say yeah I voted for him. Right. I think it's a lot. I mean you're right, and I think there's other things that we can criticize him for, but I think this one I'm I personally am in favor of this action and his um being steadfast on it. Like we're out, we're done, we're getting, we're done. I mean, as far as like the war powers, it's just, just kind of like that that weird area of you know that if something were to happen, we want you know to be able to respond quickly and not have to go through the periodic bureaucratic process of having Congress vote on it. But at the same time, you know, we want there to be a more collective voice on voting whether or not to send right. troops into harm's way. And the reality is, we There's did that, that, that kind of duality of that that near knee, knee jerk reaction, but at the same time, like logical reaction to something that happened. Right. And the reality is, at some level, Congress did vote on it twenty times. Right. They approved budgets every year that included a massive Pentagon budget every year. Right. That at some point you could have hamstringed the effort enough that they would have had to the president would have had to pull out because they didn't have the stuff to do the to do the job, whatever the job theoretically was but i i would um we'll be back within 12 15 minutes. i think you're right absolutely i'm not selling my uh hopefully you to let i'm not I selling mean, any of my my war company stocks i'm gonna hold on to them I mean, that's, I might buy a few more. that's always my issue i mean if you want to inject yourself into you know a global conflict you really need to go in multilaterally in, in, in the un type situation I don't. I mean, for this one, I don't know if that would have helped, but I give. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying I don't know if it would have changed the eventual outcome. I think it would have been. A, it would have been. A, it would have been the same conversation of attrition. How many people are going to stick around for as long as it takes to do the job, which apparently right. is forever. You know, how many other countries are going to continue I don't, to pour I don't money know if it into like it? Lessens the blowback to where you know it doesn't point the finger at like one party. It points the finger, and I guess maybe maybe more acceptable even upon the. Among the the citizens themselves, like it's not just one country saying like, "Hey, you guys can't be doing this shit." It's right, and a collection it, of, of of countries that are coming and saying like, "Hey, like this is not how we do things." Right, but it can, I mean, yeah, and it could open. They, it it opens the door. Well, Germany wants out, so I guess we'll all get out. Like, 
you know, if if it's if it's a collective of countries, when portions of that collective start being like, you know what, this is costing too much. It's not doing any real good. Let's get out of here. It makes it a collective escape, and so we can, you know, pass the buck as far as blame on why we didn't finish the job that way too. It works both ways, I guess. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Google the uh, most profitable item in Afghanistan. I'm not a smart guy. I'm not really sure why we just haven't decided to fucking bomb the shit out of these fields. Oh, uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, don't, I just don't get it. I thought I remember seeing years ago there was like a major natural gas pipeline that, that ran through Afghanistan. I mean, I mean, the, I mean at least you, the narrative... You have, the narrative you have that, poppy, which, I mean, you've got, you know, morphine, opiate type things. Because that was one thing, like, you know, 10, 15 years ago was trying to persuade these farmers to stop growing opium and grow other things. Is that legal? Well, I guess legal in the international sense. They were the 18th largest world producer of grapes in 2018. I mean, I get, I, I, I follow where you're going with it. But I mean, yeah, I mean, that's like, I, I made that joke, I guess, to somebody. It's like, if you want to fix it, you just turn the desert into glass and start over. There's no... There's no there. There's easier said than done. Well, it, no, I think it's easier done than said. Really, it's <laughs> if you get down to the technical parts of it. But like morally, no. About, like dropping napalm, turning sand into glass. I'm not thinking napalm, no. but so what's our goal? What? What's our goal there? What is? I it? think that was the main. Our issue. goal in this conversation, or our goal in sure, Afghanistan? sure. I uh, pick one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, whichever one you get to first. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know what our goal in Afghanistan was. Nobody does. And I think that 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 was that right there is the core issue. Yeah. We didn't go in there with well, a plan. It was initially to try to find Osama bin Laden, and it kind of like turned into other things. Let, let me back up. Other actually. reasons to to fight the war on terror. I. I so. Um, I, I. I'm giving them a pass. We we knew why we were there. We were there to feed the system. That's why we. Were there. I agree. And you you can get public opinion behind it because you can redirect and convince. Right, we had a specific blah, blah, blah. event that made it real easy to right. push opinion. Right. At the, at the end of the day, we we were there for reasons that we already understand. Beware the military industrial complex. That's why we're there. Wasn't and there? Then, a, I'm sorry. Wasn't there a? Um, oh God, this might this might have been an Alex Jones thing. So I apologize. But wasn't there? No, the, was, there was a. Um, there was like a, the the playbook for the the um, the rebuilding of the Middle East or whatever. That went through, and it's like we're going to go invade this country. We're going to do this in this country, and it's like it went down the list, and we and like Afghanistan was like part of the halfway down the list, including like Syria and this other shit. Oh, what are you talking about. So that's probably definitely doesn't change the, Alex Jones uh, thing. It might have been, but it doesn't change the premise of where where AC was going. And I apologize for interrupting. Um, if there are people that actually believe that that's a uh, that was the reason to show up there in Afghanistan, they are completely completely misunderstanding or neglecting probably the idea of blowback and the consequences of hard power versus soft power. You can't just show up and say the liberators are here and blow shit up and then expect the people that have lived there for millennia to just welcome the American flag and say everything is wonderful. That's not how this works. Because, like, imagine if North Korea showed up here, bombed this place to hell, or like the major cities, and then what? All of a sudden, we are supposed to follow North Korean culture. Like that's not how this works. So, um, it's disingenuous. It's naive at best and disingenuous in reality. Definitely doesn't make any sense to me. And anybody who has any yeah. sort of especially yeah, coming in there like you guys are thinking totally wrong. You should think like this. And they're I mean, like, well, no, we we have no concept of the way you think like that. Right, right. I mean, again, like it, it that is totally foreign to us. Sure, China shows up, and the, and China bombs, L. A., Chicago, uh, Detroit, New York City, Dallas, uh, a number of other cities, and they just bring the damn Red Army in here. All of a sudden, we're going to be speaking Chinese in less than five yeah. years, and we're going to be reading, you know. Uh, Manifestos about their greatest, 
they're great communist rulers. Like that's not how yeah. this works. I mean, I, I wonder that sometimes is if if that's one thing that's kind of changed the the American ideal of things is we've kind of been this island with two large oceans on either side of us that has never in the past, you know, at least 100, 150 years, any kind of concept of another four power coming through and taking power. Right. And totally changing the way your, your government was. So then what I was mean, we've got like the Civil War was our last like great war that was fought on our soul on our soil. I mean, I mean outside of that, I mean, ask, like, we, we had the, the. I mean, most of Europe. The January sixth debacle. I mean, Napoleon took over most of Europe. <laughs> that was all French. You had Germanic. A little bit before that, but. Uh, Right, yeah, both world war, both, both world, world wars, wars, which were Germany going trying to back take and over forth, Europe. Cold War with the Soviet Union extending their reach, which really wasn't. You a had war. World War II. You had Japan going into uh, occupying much of China and most of the Southeast Asia. Britain was in India up until sixties, seventies, till Gandhi essentially led the revolt. I mean, much of the world was kind of controlled by like other powers having a say on what was going on in your thing yet you still had up until you know late 1800s most of africa was either french dutch not so much spanish but english controlled same with south america mostly spanish controlled up until a certain point until there was a revolt of that kind of imperial power mm-hmm. so americans then- were able to do it a little bit earlier I asked this semi facetiously. What was the point? Why did we go there? I told you the point. I mean, I'm, 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 I pretty much agree with you. I'm just military-industrial complex. Period. Make people money. Well, more importantly, make make uh, make connected, uh, well-adjusted, well-informed people money, while the uh, arguably the the lower-class individuals who are the essentially the foot soldiers are the ones that. And their families. Right. And all you get is some fucking bullshit 21 gun salute ceremony with a flag that's, you know, folded and then they're forgotten four days later. That's how this works. Yep. It is. I think, I mean, uh, I, again, I, I, I 100% agree with you. I mean, I really do. Um, so, on that note, um, the Tennessee Power Poll. I don't know if you guys are familiar with what the power poll is. No, nope. apparently I don't. I don't know exactly how you get on the list of people they power poll. Like it's a um, percentage of persons, um, but uh, a, a significant percentage basically said that we are we are in the beginning of the fall of Rome. That's what they're. That's they, not a they, novel they, concept. Has been going like that sort of thinking. Uh, there were some classes I was taking before I got into healthcare that was saying the same thing. Um, so it's not it's not necessarily a new thing. I agree with it. Uh, but it's not necessarily a new concept or a new idea. Right, I agree. I, I, I know it's not a new idea, but um, so I was thinking about it earlier today is what happened to the I don't know the uh, is it an olive olive farmer? Are they farmers for olives? Are they rancher? What's what's the title? The the, the guy that grew yeah, olives. Olive farmer, yeah. Right, the guy that grew olives out in some rural portion of Italy when when Rome fell. What happened to him? Is that a real question? Yeah, okay. he stayed in business. He just had a different person over him that was buying that from him. Probably, I guess that's the, that's that that yeah, that's what I'm pushing at. The idea is that okay, so or maybe who owned his land? All of a sudden, they may have come in and said, "Oh, somebody else owns this land now. You don't own this land anymore." Right. That's I mean that's, that that's possible. I, I guess the the, my, the the reason I bring it up, I guess, is the idea that if this is the quote fall of Rome, if if the United States Empire is starting to crumble. What happens to us? We haven't spread that far, but yeah. Nothing. That's kind of where I'm at. Nothing happens. Like, is it for, for you know, for run of the mill, for the 80 something percent of us, what is, what is it, what does it really no, change? Nothing happens because at the end of the day, uh, the people that are well connected in this, in this country have international connections that are, are well beyond, uh, the United States soil. Uh, money in different markets internationally. Mm-hmm. Uh, the idea that uh, America is in the decline really only matters for the 
the lower class, maybe lower middle class folks to sit there and have intellectual masturbation comments about. It 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 uh, only matters to, in that scenario. Th there are not people that are millionaires that are connected in this country that only have money in markets and domestic soil. Right. It's not a thing. They they learned and and diversified. Yeah, I mean, like th there's so much globalization that it doesn't matter. And with it, I guess, but it comes with the the added benefit that um, China can't come back and say, "Hey, give us." all the debts that you owe because i mean right. who else is going to buy from them right so uh, n none of it, so it matters only insofar as some sort of patriotic you know uh uh wow you, we used to be the 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 moral beacon and the military beacon and now you could argue that we're maybe not either other than that it's just intellectual masturbation it doesn't really fuck right me. i mean i i I'd, I'd say we're still the military beacon on like the 1960s standard not the current standard. I mean, it, it, if if military beacon, if you mean by that, like simple hard power, where you go in and shoot people, but like that's not even how. I mean, persuading a a, a country to do something is is uh, probably the better approach. Not not, not as some sort of I'm going to be a pacifist, but functionally, in, right, in an efficient sort of way, right. It'll cost less to get what you're running out of it. In case, some of I mean, case in point, if if the argument is we were actually going to Afghanistan, change something, we didn't really change anything, assuming that that's, you know, the argument, which it's not, but um, it doesn't really matter for any decline. The people that are connected are not fully in this domestic market anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, but me and you that aren't connected outside of this market. I'm in healthcare, so it doesn't matter to me. I don't give a fuck. People are still going to be sick. So uh, I don't give a shit. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, the people that, that should care are the ones that are in manufacturing jobs, same jobs that have been going away for the last 40 years. Um, but me personally, I don't, I mean, I don't give a fuck. doesn't bother me at all. Fair enough. All right, I think we ran this to the ground. What's next? Damn. Vegas mm -hmm. has got, Vegas has, has Tennessee with six wins. Over under is six wins. Can we bring the schedule up real quick? Yeah. I'm going to take the under. Without looking at the schedule. I think six is a solid, I think six is a hard pick number. I don't think the over is good. I think the push is, is I, I think it's an accurate number. I think the push is very likely. So, Bowling Green, probably Pitt, Tennessee Tech, there's three. Well, Florida's uh, a loser. Uh, sure. Uh, South yep. Alabama's probably four. I don't know where you're gonna get the other ones. I mean, like you probably you. you I mean, uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, you're losing. Vandy and Kentucky in the years past have been coin flips. I think we could win one or the other, We've but lost probably a lot not of, both. I, I'm taking the under, man. I'm sorry. I, don't, I I see the first three games, and then we lose our next one, two, three, four, five in a row at least, maybe okay, six. So, Again, I don't know. I don't know where Missouri's at. I don't know where South Carolina's at. Where's Mississippi at? I don't know where Ole Miss is at. It's Lane Kiffin. Right. He's going to beat us here. That's fair. All right, I'll give you that one. I forgot about Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. He's a hundred percent going to beat us here. But I don't know where Missouri's at, and I don't know where South Carolina's at, as far as like in the grand scheme of SEC football. We, I mean, we, we've we've got a new coaching staff. We lost what twenty players in the last twelve months. Yeah. That's a lot of fucking attrition. You'd say uh, Garantano might not get the start in Washington or whatever? Washington I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. He was a five-star prospect coming out of Jersey. Yeah. It was, it's crazy. Like, you go back and you look at some of his stuff. Like, he was a very highly touted player. But, yeah, I just, I just, I just kind of saw a headline on that that he wasn't looking very good. I'm going to take the under. Uh, I, I really am. We'll, I mean, we'll I, don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily disagree with the under. I think, I think six is – I think six is – I think six is right, but – if it was six and a half, I'd take the under. But since it's six, I'm kind of like, eh. I mean, I, was, I wouldn't bet it anyway, just because, you know, you don't bet the home team. But I mean, I, 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 see, I see four solid wins, but really, you could lose to any of those teams. I mean, Pittsburgh, like, uh, Pittsburgh's one of those teams that, like, some years they're a relevant program, and some years they just are dog shit. <clears throat> I mean, uh... There's okay, so here's here's the thing. We've what talked... are the odds on that? We, we took we'll take a look at that. See what the 
The odds are on the over under. I mean, it's it's one ten. It's even money. Okay. <clears throat> um, I think the last time I looked at it, I'll have to check it again. But um, okay, because this is something I was thinking about. Um, you know, we've t- you and I have had the conversation off here a number of times about the product that is college football. Mm-hmm. More specifically, when you and I talk about it, it's the product that UT puts on the field, which is dog shit. Is being dog shit. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think it's bigger than a UT problem. I think college football is having a product issue. Okay, elaborate. I'm just thinking, like you know, like realistically, pick a conference. SEC. Relevant teams in the in the SEC. Uh, can we get an operating definition of relevant? I mean, teams that are uh, are likely to have a real shot at the national championship. Georgia, Alabama. Georgia. They've been in Georgia the theoretically until the end of the year, but yes. I mean, they they've been in the college playoff uh, at least once in the last four years. Okay. Um, when was the last time Auburn was in the college playoff? It's been a minute. I think greater than four years. Well, we'd have to look that. We'd have to stat I mean, that. But we've I got an Al Gore. We have Al Gore right in front of us. Let's look. So uh, say, Alabama in the past four years. Yeah, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, um, LSU, LSU. Um, I mean, that's, that's that's four teams out of out of the league. I mean, that's it's not a it's not a it's it's not okay. a bad number. Let's pick a different conference. Well, then your argument isn't whether or not college football is a good product. Then the argument is any conference except for the SEC doesn't have a good product. I mean, I'm, right. College football as a whole is not a good product. The SEC is a decent product. The rest of college football is one decent product that can come play with the good product. Um, I don't like the decent word. I'll give it to you for now, but I don't know what your point is. I would say, like, I mean, ACC. Where's the competition in the ACC? They had some last year, only, only because... Notre Dame finally took a conference because you, they had to. Are you trying? So you're trying to say that that uh, a lack of parity is call, causing a problem in the college, in college football? Is right. that what you're saying? I mean, I think I I I think if if college football was a good product, the idea that an undefeated team exists would be an excited rarity, not a requirement to make the playoff, or a near requirement to make the playoff. I would imagine that this that there there have been uh, relatively the same number of undefeated teams in the last five years as there were twenty to twenty five years ago. I, I mean that, that that'd be a good stats question too. I, I, don't, I don't I don't think that that number has really changed. I really don't. I, I don't think it's it's about. I, I think you're arguing parity. I don't think you're arguing win, wins and losses because we've had a number of times where where we've had a. Uh, non-power conference team be undefeated and they were disregarded. Right. I'm not saying they should or shouldn't be disregarded. I'm just saying that it's happened. And so I, th- I think you're arguing parity, not necessarily... Uh, I, don't, I, I think that's fair because I think, to me, I guess parity implies quality product. That's, I don't agree with that. So what is... I mean, what is a quality product in football then to you? Um... I don't, I don't know. You're the one saying that college football is, is not a good product. So I, I don't. I I would argue that uh, the atmosphere is a good product, and if a team is uh, consistently less than 500, that's not a good product. Anything other than that, I'm not. Really, I, I'm not ready to say college football as a whole is a bad product. Um, Tennessee football has been a bad product for a while because the what you see on the field is terrible. You're down by 27, and you. Uh, kick a field goal, you're now down by 24, and you hear Rocky Top, and it's in the second quarter. And people are crazy. And that's absurd to me. Uh, That's a bad product. But clearly it isn't a bad product because people are buying it. Right. So um, it's a a long set of uh, you need to define, you know, what quality product is, what parity is, what a bunch of this shit is about. That's the only way we're actually able to get right. I mean, okay. So for me, I think I think. <clears throat> um, uh, what's the word? I, I think parody is is probably I guess the best word um, that's coming to mind at the time for probably if I'm going to put a couple of characteristics on what a quality product is. I like the premise of. <clears throat> I think this team's going to win, but it wouldn't be like world changing if they didn't. You know, like it's one of those, like you know, like the 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 App State beating Michigan 
couple years back, like what fucking uh, guys like eight years ago now or whatever. It's probably a little bit longer than that. But, but yeah. you know, like that one being like so anomalous for what it was. But especially back then, App State was a Division Two school too, which that's a separate sub context. But like the idea that, um, you know, how I mean, you know, even pre tournament era, you know, Vandy is an SEC school, Kentucky is an SEC school, and if they win an SEC game, probably against the other one. That is like a super good year for them regularly. Like that's just not you know, <clears throat> you know the it's idea. Always been that way though. I agree. I'm not, I'm not saying it, it hasn't, but I'm just saying like there's not um, there's there's a there's a sense that games are given and we still watch them. That's what I don't like. That's what I don't like about college ball. Like we're still gonna watch Alabama play um, Utah State. I don't know if that's a good example, but you know we're still gonna watch Alabama play Utah State when it's a 47 point spread. It's because you're watching uh, minor league football at that point. That's why that's a decent product. I, I Okay. I would say, like, I don't know. I guess, you know, like, who has been a relevant team outside of, like, there's been, like, six teams in the last ten years that really count. I mean. You know, and then every once in a while we have another. But, uh, again, they're, you know, West Virginia apparently, the commissioner of, in West Virginia apparently refused the new expanded uh, playoff format they were talking about. So that's not going to happen. Yet, um, sorry. I mean, you you can make the argument that in '98, when the last time we were uh, we were champs here, that I mean, there there were six or eight teams that were really good then too. It was uh, us, arguably, Florida, that was like Texas, Nebraska, Texas, right. FSU. <laughs> uh, I mean, USC, Notre Dame. I mean, I it's it, it's a it, it's cyclical. So I mean. I, I don't think it's really any different. I, I mean, Alabama is in its own different stratosphere. I'll give you that. But if you can remove, if you can figure out a way to remove Alabama from the conversation, um, I mean, to me, it's no different than it was twenty years ago. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it just feels different to me because I don't gamble as much as I used to. Maybe that was part of my love of football. Was I was a really bad, bad gambler. Well, and and it's not also, bad, but well, just junky. It also sucks that that uh, UT is just absolutely terrible. Yeah, I mean, part of the time, I mean, when you've got a great team, more people going, more good people are going to be more enticed to come to your team. So it's just a revolving cycle of you having great players because you've had great players prior. Right, and the system makes it really hard to dig out of that hole once you get in it. Right. Yeah. Unless you can get lucky and have, you know, somebody that was a third string that's just all of a sudden they're badass. And you've got a great season, got really lucky. Right. I think the yeah. analytics have changed. Boise too. State type things, you know. But I think the, yeah. Uh, and I think Boise State should. Mm hmm. Yeah. Is he barking your fence? Huh? Not him. That dog next door. Like no. you guys, do you guys ever go out your little back patio and walk in no, that little? Rarely. <clears throat> that is the most barkiest ass dog ever. No. So anyway, Rowdy's barking at my neighbor's dog, who barks all the fucking time. All right, so that's football talk. What's next? No. No. Really not having it tonight, Rowdy. I really don't like your your tood. You see my edge. Do what? You see my edge. I mean, I don't like my dog barking in the podcast. That that gets me a little. I mean, you can cut this out. It's not that big of a deal. So we're not saying anything important anyway. It is. It is a little bit of work, but I can do it. I'm special like that. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. <clears throat> Oh, oh, okay, so here's one. Um, I gotta go find it again. You're gonna have him read it? Yeah, I'm gonna try to do this without uh, um, influence, pre influence on accident. Pre influence on accident. All right, so have you been paying? I mean, obviously, you've been paying attention to the COVID situation and stuff like that. Have you been mm. pay, like the school board stuff that's going on? Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's nonsense. Most of it is okay. What do you mean by that? Elaborate. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm sick of the uh, political the, the uh, 
we are so quick in 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 our society to uh put some fucking value on moral relativism like well it's okay for you and 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 it's okay then if it's okay for somebody but like there are times where that like things are not they don't have to be uh morally relative like and and it it's it, it's it's uh it's it's frustrating the the idea that your liberty is is uh tied to one's fucking bullshit choice it it it's um it's also disingenuous if the same people that were pushing to not have masks and to not get vaccinated actually meant what they said they would be okay with abortion but they're not across the board okay and it it it's just all of this is just uh it's a microcosm of how fucked our political system is all right okay i'm on board with that and it and it's it's um it 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 doesn't have to be that way it doesn't have to be that way i agree okay so um jennifer owen who i had on earlier this week who's might be the most popular show we've done so far um uh it was a great show had a great time she was really fun and so um she or a a different person had posted a link to her uh website which is kind of her uh she, i'm sorry she's on the school board she's district two school board rep um and so she has this website that she does where she puts information out for people that want to sell or whatever and so um you know this big mask argument in schools and whether we should or shouldn't be masking in schools and all this kind of different stuff which was a big part of the conversation that we had trying to figure out where the authority lies on whether it's a school board thing or whether it's a state thing or who can do what on this kind of thing. It's a big part of the conversation. Um, and so she puts this on her website and um, I don't know, just uh, if, I mean, do you want me to read it to you or would you like to read it for us? Doesn't matter. Um, so uh, headline is uh, Knox County School Administration refuses to follow board vote. Uh, when a superintendent presents an opening plan to the school board for a vote of adoption, one would expect the superintendent and his administrative staff to also support said plan. Um, this has not been the case in Knox County Schools. Not only has the plan been changed without a board vote multiple times, but members of the Knox County School Administration have responded to parent concerns with information that is completely contrary to the standing vote, even after the law department has publicly clarified that this vote is still valid. This is very, very concerning. As for the persons whose responsibility is to ensure that my community has access to accurate and transparent information, I will not hide these failures. The public has the right to know that the Knox County Schools Administration is clearly refusing to follow the board's intent, and I have pointed this out on multiple occasions beginning in May. In Tennessee, a board of education only speaks through its votes. No individual board member can tell the superintendent what to do. It would be unethical for a board member to push a superintendent to do something contrary to a vote of the board, and likewise unethical for a superintendent to follow a direction from an individual board sc school board member. The only direction that it can be given is through the passing of a vote by the board. So... Um, back in April, they voted on essentially Knox County Schools is going to follow whatever the state health department says, which essentially is whatever the CDC says on guidelines. So it's been this big back and forth. Everybody, you know, public forum, parents getting pissed off, ABC, whatever that's going on kind of thing. And so um, on the original post that I read this off of, I asked the question. Well, actually, before I do that. Um, so the April 14th vote basically said we're following said guidelines. The headline says the administration is not following the guidelines we said we're going to follow. All right. And so this, this paragraph here that starts with uh, in Tennessee, a board of education only speaks through its votes. Uh, fuck. I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to frame this without implying my direction on it. Um, gets down to the bottom. The summation of the whole thing is that um, the April 14th vote is still valid and should be in place. Um, and they should be following the recommendations of the Department of Health, which is also the recommendation of the CDC. Anything less would be should be seriously scrutinized, and it would be a direct conflict with the directive of the board. I can't figure out where this paragraph came from in in the context of what we're talking about. The paragraph being uh, the Board of Education only speaks through its votes. No board member can do things unilaterally. It can't go tell the superintendent what to do. I'm, I, I don't know what the point is of that. Um. I don't know. I, it, it's it's hard to get all the context in quickly on all the different parts and pieces of what's going on here. So, what's what, what's your larger uh, uh, talking piece point? I guess to me, so the 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 administration. So, um, 
the superintendent is hired essentially by the school board. The superintendent gets to hire other people in the office with the approval of the school board, but the superintendent is hired by the school board. All right. So the legally speaking, as I understand it, the, um, the Bob Thomas works for the school board. School board votes on things. Bob Thomas is required because that's his job to work for the school board to do the things. It's not getting done. And there's this big argument about why it's not getting done. And so the question is, why isn't it getting done? And so to me, this paragraph that I'm bringing up implies what the what the problem is. And so I got berated for asking the question. It's like, well, who is going to the superintendent telling him what to do that isn't a school board vote? Because why would you put this paragraph in if that's not what's happening? Mm -hmm. And that's where I get confused on this whole thing. Again, I was trying to do this without leading you to where I was, but this is, I don't know how to... I mean, there's so much context to this, I don't know how to do it. I mean, I think at the end of the day, I think if what you're saying is people are not following a set of rules, then, I mean, they should follow the set of rules or change them. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I, yeah, I agree. I, yes. I mean, I don't disagree with that. But on the on the but on the but specifics of, like, this little political game that's get, getting played in the school board with the superintendent, like, I don't understand why this isn't a, a simpler conversation of school board gave superintendent direction, superintendent is not following direction, Where's the recourse of this of the system in this in this play? Because again, to me, to, to put the rule of why a um, it would be unethical for the superintendent to follow the direction of a school board member, not the board's vote, implies that there's somebody doing that. To me, so uh, you said you were berated. What is it? Well, you, you want to elaborate on that? Well, it's just like you know, where did you even get that from? I, I mean, it was. Um, I mean, I asked if you're implying that a school board member is instructing Mr. Thomas to not follow that vote. Where'd you get that from? I got that from that particular paragraph, because why would you put that paragraph in there if that wasn't what was happening? So Jennifer Owen responded to something that you... I mean, I was asking her that question. Right. And so, I don't know. You asked if people interact with us on Facebook, though. I mean, I, this is the only way I would know, because I have hmm. on Facebook. I mean, hey, we picked up a uh, like four new Twitter followers this week from the from Jennifer Owen episode. But I don't know. It's 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 weird to me that like it 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 at least as it's been described to me, it's very clear that this is how the rules set. And if the administration is not doing what the board has said so, because it gets to this whole mess, it's like everybody's shitting on the school board for their inaction through a pandemic, and it's like, well, we had action, it's not getting done. There's no conversation about, well, this is when you fire the superintendent because that's your will as a board and bring in a superintendent that's going to do his job, which includes doing what the board says. And that's what I'm really, I'm like, I'm lost on this. Like this is, is you know, this is one of a handful of subjects that I would argue that I'm probably above average in Knox County in understanding. And I still don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> you know, that's that. What's the phrase? What's the word you like to use? Um. It's 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 a problem. Like it's it's just. I mean, I like the political the the politicalization issue. I hundred percent agree with. Like, why this? Like, wh like, like, even for the the sake of conversation, let's pretend um, that we know for a fact that Bob Thomas is like a super Trumplican, and he's going to do whatever Trump and those kind of super right people tell him to do. It's not his fucking job. He doesn't get the, that. That's not within his wheelhouse. Now, some of the board members playing that game, they were elected. That's that's you know kind of the elected official job it's a little bit different but this seems pretty clear cut to me that you have a person who is hired to do a job has anybody answered that question for you do it has anybody answered that question no not why, yet why not well uh, this all went on this afternoon so i haven't had any a chance to to reach out to her. i mean I, I, again it's like you know um in my original question are you implying that a school board member is instructing mr thomas to not follow that vote if yes who if not what is mr thomas's reason is there a confusion, conflicting policy between state and local that could be causing this incongruent behavior? I was really proud of myself for the use of incongruent in a sentence. Yeah, but did you spell it right? I don't know, did I? You're looking I, at I it. I can't see it. I, there's a ton of... I-N-C-O-N-G-R-U-E-N-T. Incongruent. Yeah, I mean, I didn't get a red squiggly line when yeah, I wrote it, so... That's, that's that's right. So if it's not spelled right, it's some other word that I did spell right that looks a lot like it. Which would have been better. <laughs> it's it's very possible. I'm not. This yeah. Hey, this is this is that Knox County education at work, people. Is that geometry? Incongruent. But I mean, it's just I don't know. It's it's. 
That's a good joke, actually. I like that. That's good. You, Sam, Sam woke up for that joke, everybody. That's good. He almost pulled a Max and fell asleep oh, on him. I'll sleep on him. He's you. sitting in Max's chair, so he's nodding off. I'm just fucking over this COVID shit. I'm I agree. Just, I'm fucking over it. I'm, um... I mean, realistically, it, it seems like the world in general is. No, it's it's different. It's different in healthcare. They want it to be over, but... No, I, I'm... I'm just fucking over it. You gonna travel any? Are they out there? I, okay, maybe not that. Maybe not the direct question, but they're out there. Like, have you seen them out there? Like big, big ones. Yeah, like it's like not, it's like nine grand. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I figured like I saw like some of the different stuff going on. Was it like uh, we're just right here up in? Uh, uh, I mean, there was it was huge burnout. You know, last year, a lot of those people well, just never came back. They were like, never mind. It's worse now though because the people that are showing up now are overwhelmingly unvaccinated and young, and. um It's fucking stupid. I love you. It's fucking stupid. Stupid. Like, like, all the times that I've ever joked with you, it's just fucking dumb. It just is, man. I don't fucking get it. Okay. I just don't. You're way fucking smarter than that. And I say that because I love you, actually. I get it. That's why I say it. It's just fucking dumb. It, it's like, we're, we're fucking, we're, we're, like, it's sheep is what it is. Like we get a polio vaccine. We get an MMR vaccine. We do all the shit we go to fucking school with your kids have it that to go to school. It doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Like where's the line at? Like where, like what needs to happen for people to say, yeah, I need to go ahead and, and get that. This is real. Like where's the line? Like what has to happen? I thought it was great, like New Zealand shut down from like one person getting it. it they had one person in life went, went off on vacation to Australia and came back COVID positive. And they're like, I'm going to shut this like 5 million person country. And they're like, we got to start doing restrictions again. I'm not even suggesting that. The people that died, no, 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 right. the, the, the people that, that I dealt with last year for eight or nine months. All of them were greater than 57, 58 years old. All of them. It's it's different this year. They're 35 to 45. All of them. It's, it's gotten younger. The average has gotten younger. That uh, psychologist game we got going on right now? Huh? Mm -hmm. Is that psychiatrist, it's, it's, psychologist it's, it's game? It's reverse psychology. No, so we're, we're all going to wait. Yeah. Nobody wants to be the first one to talk. Uh, I, I'm looking for a different topic. Bray's one today. That's good. Yeah. Pretty sure uh, Brewers are top of the league right now. They're top like three or four in the you know. National League? Yeah. Probably. So some of the Yankees beat the Braves like for the like the Braves Taylor. were on like a nine game winning streak. Yeah, so were the Yankees actually. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was yeah. the Yankees. Yeah, it was the Yankees yeah. that beat the Braves to beat the Braves like yeah. nine game winning streak. Yeah. Can't do it. Just can't get back into baseball. My Braves have been good, or my Braves, my Brewers have been good for the last couple of years, and I just don't care. Can't get back I, I lost interest in baseball years ago. Yeah, me too. 90, 94, 90, 94 90, 93, series. 94. Uh, you mean the strike? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's when I wanted to be a baseball player. And then, <laughs> you know, couldn't figure out, I couldn't understand, like, what? Money? What? Play fucking baseball. Shut up. I've never yeah. gotten, I've never gotten over that. Don't you want to play? The collective bargaining agreement, I think, is up at the end of this year anyway, so you may you, you may have a strike. Again? 
Yeah, maybe. Yay. Yeah, there's there's some chatter about it. I mean, baseball's weird contract wise too, because what do you got? Like, you got guys that retired 15 years ago that are still getting fucking paychecks. Huh? It's the contract deals. Very, very, very rare. Is it? Yes. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the contract rules and all that kind of shit. No, it's very rare. The one you're probably referring to is Bobby Bonilla, and that's just because uh, it's a New York Mets contract, and the Mets are the Mets. So <laughs> it's you know they're the you know they're 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 a dumpster fire. Right. So. As always, some more to do with like injury, and they just were never coming back from the contract. I don't, I don't know what the rule. I, I, I don't know. Just heard different stories. I remember one year, back when Nolan Ryan was playing. No, Roger Clemens, excuse me. Um, when I think he was like closing, I think he was closing for either Boston or New York late in his career. Um, uh, me and a couple of buddies of mine, we did the math, and it's like you know, like he averaged like twenty-seven pitches a game or thirty-two pitches a game, something ridiculously low. And like we did the math on his contract, and it's like he gets like one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a pitch, two hundred thousand dollars a pitch on yeah. average. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Now, to be fair, in the um, capitalist of it, he sells jerseys. He does a lot of stuff more than just throw pitches. So that I, I could, I could now looking back on it, I could see a little bit more value in said contract. But well, at the time, it was just like, are we? Are this is really happening? He's making one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a pitch. He's also arguably one of the top twenty-five pitchers of all time. True. So I mean, you know, he made more money in his career than Tom Seaver did. He made more money in his, in his career than Cy Young did. You know, they named an award after him. Right. So. I mean. I see. It's a like. I think it's the interesting thing about sports that I can't, like, I can't really complain about it, like, realistically. Like, if I'm trying to be, like, fully honest about it. I can't, I can't go down the road of the argument that they get paid too much. I can't, that's just not, I don't think it's a valid argument. Because if they got, if, it wouldn't be too much if we didn't watch it. If we didn't consume I, and, it as a and thing. And that's what we, what we compare it to. They're like, well, the, the organization itself is making this much money, so the, the team that's bringing in the money for that organization they should be getting their fair share of of those earnings. It's it. I hate to say perspective all the time, but it all comes down to perspective. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. A pit a pitcher. Essentially, they they're doing great. They want their value based upon how much the organization above them is making. That's why they expect to make more. They're like, hey, you're making this much money because we've sold this many seats and you're selling this many jerseys based upon me being there. I deserve more because you guys are getting a, a large chunk of the money. Right, okay, that's generally what they base their value upon. It's what they're bringing to that organization. I don't know if I. I, I mean, that's. I get I'm what you're saying. That's what I don't they know use for I... their bargaining. No, they, as it's far usually... as like you know, recontract. They're like, hey, I've been here a few years. That's why a lot of them do like a three year contract for um, among you know most sports. They haven't come in for a few years. A like see how they're actually going to do. In the I get first... what you're saying. I do. I just I don't know that an agent is arguing about how much money the organization is making and why their players should make that money. I agree that they're going to argue that that goes into their. I agree that their they're going to say the phrase of how much money they're worth. I, I agree that they're going to say the phrase that you know he sells X number of jerseys for you. Right. People watch because he's on your team, but I don't think they're calculating how much the organization is making against what they're asking for their clients pay. Well, the organization's making factors into, I mean, if you're bringing more people into the stands, and you could argue that most of those people are coming to see, you know, if you are the star player, yeah, you've got those diehard fans, but you've also got those other fans that are there just to see some of those key people play. I get it. And that's why what uh, Popovich got in trouble with the the uh, Spurs. the Spurs a couple of years back because he didn't even bring what was Duncan and somebody else on a road trip mm-hmm. it's a great story no, no idea what the fuck you're talking because about. like other the other team owners were pissed off because they had like a a, a a couple of different series that were all on the road and so it was like they went you know it was this, the Spurs were going like to Milwaukee and then to Chicago and then to Detroit for like a three game series a three game series and a three game series yeah. and Popovich was like hey uh, Duncan and what Ginobili or something like that a couple of the bigger stars for the Spurs he's like you know because basketball midseason it's not that important to win all the games in the midseason so he's like you know you guys stay home and rest and for the final stretch and so the owners of the Bucks and the Bulls and the the Pistons were like dude you gotta at least bring them 
you got to at least let my fans think that they're going to play because that's going to sell me more seats. Right. Because people aren't coming out to the games because you're not bringing stars. And again, that's to give you credence to your argument. I'm not disagreeing with that. But again, point being, I'm not going to argue against these ridiculously high salaries that these guys get paid to play a game because we we consume it regularly. So however the income, however you want to, you know, however you want to assess the income part of it, the, the consumption is there, so the value is there. That's my stance on it, at least. I kind of see. I think it's more just kind of like evaluation of, of, of what we, expectations, I guess, across like society in general, of what an expectation of a salary of any position being. Right, we tried. That's you tried. Yeah. Uh, we got pro ball start. Pro sports? football. Yeah. yeah Soccer in downtown Knoxville. That's again. gonna be something. We need to get an ultimate team. There we go. Somebody give me a reasonable, rational argument why somebody wouldn't take a vaccine. An ultimate team downtown. Can we get an ultimate team playing here? Like, do we have a pro ultimate team? Is there no. a league that plays near here? No, there's not. Is that an option? Can we get? Can we make that happen? It's not an option. That's a bummer. I like. I like. I've really enjoyed watching some of the highlights and shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just, yeah. Brody Smith. I'm not trying to awesome. be a dick. That's that's not that's not my goal, man. I'm sorry. That's not, I'm not trying to be a dick. I don't fucking get it. I I put so many fucking people in a body bag that thought that everything was okay. Like, I I, I don't fucking get it. I don't get it. Okay. You I mean like you you don't even re- you're like you don't have anything. Like, there's nothing. We can do it off air, or we can not do it off air, I guess, but I, I just, like, any reasonable, rational argument why anybody would not get a vaccine, I don't get it. Okay. I, I respect that you don't get it. I don't, I, I, I don't, um, I mean, I, I, I don't. On what level do I? On what level do you feel like it's my responsibility to justify it to you? I don't think that you've justified it for you. It has nothing to do with me. I, selfishly, I, 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 um, I'll be devastated if something happened to you, because more than likely it would be me that would be taking care of you, or, or I would have the option at least. It is. It, it's not about justifying to me. I don't give that. That doesn't mean anything to me. I. I don't think people have actually justified that to themselves. I believe that. I really do. Okay. And uh, every single time that I've asked somebody that, they can't respond. There's not a response. It's, You're so good at this. It's not fair. What do you mean I'm so good at this? You're so good at this. I'm fucking right. Like it has nothing to do with being good about this or not. It's. It's. I'm fucking right. Like I've had people. FaceTime their family members from a different state because they're dying. And, like, it, it has nothing to do with whether somebody is good or not. It's just, it doesn't fucking exist. Period. It doesn't exist, dude. We live in a world where we're okay with telling somebody things are okay for you and that's okay with you and you can do that and this person can do that. But, like, in a lot of ways, we're fucking pussies as a society because we don't tell somebody outright they're fucking wrong. Like, we don't do that anymore. That's a problem. I'm not saying it's necessarily this problem. Okay, so It is uh, a problem. All right, so there's a, there's a starting point. Who is we? I'm happy to engage in this, to have this turned around for you to not answer that question. I really am, but we will circle back around to it. Okay. So the we in which circumstance? The we in um in 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 the particular of um the we that wants to tell me I'm wrong. Who are the we? I didn't say that. I didn't. Uh, so what what I'm saying is you haven't justified that to yourself. Is what I just said. Now to more directly answer your your question of who the we is, the we is the the uh, individuals that have seen this intimately for uh, sixteen months can't wrap our heads around. Uh, the individuals that refuse to get vaccinated, that don't have a rational, rational, reasonable, 
answer to why they're not getting vaccinated besides I don't want to. It that that it it's not a rational or reasonable answer. And then the response, of course, to that is, well, it's not a rational or reasonable answer to you, which is another bullshit moral relativism response. Is all that is. So, like, if it, it, unless somebody was one hundred percent against vaccines, period, then it doesn't make any sense to me that people would say no to this when millions of people have received it and nothing has happened to them from the vaccine itself. Right, so if like okay, twenty five percent of the people that got the vaccine grew a third leg, or went into congestive heart failure. Like I get it. Like I get it. Like we're concerned. Like we're concerned that it may affect me. Like there's no response to that except this is my choice. That's not good enough. It's not good enough for people that care about those individuals. It's not fucking good enough. Period. It's not. Sorry. And if those people want to say, okay, well, it's not good enough, then that's, I guess that's the end of the conversation. But at the end of the day, it's not fucking good enough. So the we is the... I'm still confused on the original question. Okay. We're not going anywhere with this. Because okay. you're not answering the question. Okay. Like, the real thing is, you're not answering the question. No, nobody has answered that question. The people that that uh the people that care about other people, their response is never answered. Okay. So all right, so in an attempt to answer the question, um at minimum I'm confused. I'm okay. I'm 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 full on fucking confused. Uh, I don't know who to believe. I don't know who to trust. I don't know where to begin. Okay. And you follow that with a ever-changing goalpost of how we get through to the end of this game. And I guess my null is nothing. What's, what has been ever-changing? Um, well, it was the vaccine hit. This thing's over. No, no rational person said that. They said that the data says with this vaccine that the uh, your ability to get COVID is still there, but your uh, the potential of you getting uh, I have to look at the actual phrasing of this, but the, the potential of having some serious complications of COVID or death are very very small. The goalposts never changed with that. Now the media may run with that and say that it was something different, but from the very beginning. That is not accurate. Okay. Okay. I'm again. I'm not disagreeing with my. Uh, no, I mean, no, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm again, 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 reassert confusion. And, I don't know what's so trying confusing. to. Uh, yeah. Trying to say what's so confusing? Yeah, I don't know what's confusing. I'm I mean, happy to answer that. It's it start. I mean, you know, and I guess this is my. I'm more into politics no. than I should be to to live, but the scientific community going through the actual like experimentation realization process of adjusting to a novel coronavirus I'm sorry how is that I, 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 I'm trying to understand a little bit of your confusion like yes but there was a reason we were confused because we were still trying to learn like we didn't know exactly how transmissible it okay, was so the, the exactly confusion got... was that the, the, the... I, I'm, I'm trying to like I'm trying to understand your confusion that, that yes, it, there there was some changing in it, as far as our understanding of it. But we continually learned more and more, and as we learned, we had to adjust to our further understanding of it. Okay. So I, I can see a little bit of your your conf, uh, confusion, but not complete confusion. Okay. I, I, I don't you seem like you're completely confused, and I'm trying to give you a little bit of justification for a little bit of confusion because. There was a little bit of a learning curve that we had to adjust to because there was a lot to learn about a novel virus. So we're going to be offering a, a booster shot here in a couple of weeks. Right. Yeah. Uh, and from the very beginning, we said we didn't know how long that this was going to offer us antibody resistance. I'm not. I I, I work in healthcare. I'm not confused by that. Uh, okay, it, uh, hopefully it worked for six or eight months, or I never came into contact with it. 
Uh, I'll be there the very first day that I could possibly get it. I was there the second day only because the first day I was sleeping and didn't get registered enough time. I, I, I guess I, I, I don't, um, I, I don't understand the confusion, man. Like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know where the confusion is. Not one time did anybody say that this right here was going to allow us forever more to not get COVID ever. But, like, you look at the 130 cases of that at this local place, and, like, 88% of them are unvaccinated. I'm like, I'm not a smart dude, but, like, fuck, it's pretty good math. Like, none of them are in the ICU. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what else, like, I, I don't know how, what else do we need to convince people to take it? Like, what else needs to occur? And if the answer is nothing, then it's just as bad as the times that we have said before with Trump, where, like, where's our line with Trump? Where, like, this is the one thing he has to do for me not to follow this guy anymore. And if there's not one, then that's fucking scary. We've had that conversation. It's really the same thing with me with this. Like, what has to happen for for folks to uh, that don't have some sort of uh, sensitive, like legitimate medically diagnosed sensitivity? Okay, That's, I mean, if it's a medically induced sensitivity, if it's a legitimate one, which is like less than one half of one percent. You said that didn't exist. What? What no. you just said? You, said, it, it, you I laughed mean, at me when I, I said mean, that. To I you. mean, the, the, theoretically, it really doesn't exist. I mean, it's like less than one half of one percent. Okay. That, but but right there, the, the, the only way that any, the only reason why anybody would say that is to try to win some argument. And if that's if, if the point of this is to win an argument, then like we're all wasting our time. We should just be drinking beer and talking about fucking shooting deer in two months. This conversation has nothing to do about argument. It has, it has everything to do with the fact that like I really want my kids to to grow up and like know you. And I'm not saying that you're going to fucking die tomorrow and be some sort of fucking bullshit, you know, Nostradamus. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying at the end of the day, the people that I talk to that that have that similar outlook can't actually tell me when I have dialogue. It is a level of frustration that they have when when facts are provided to them. And I don't understand why it's so frustrating. Like, I don't want to stick a corn cob up, uh, up my ass. Somebody could say to me, hey, these are the reasons why you should do it. And yet I don't get frustrated when I tell them that I don't want to for these reasons. So it's like, I don't get the confusion. There are no national, oh my God, did you see what's happened to me as a result of this vaccine? If there was, I get it. There's not. And if it's a, oh my God, I got to get another booster. Okay, that's fine. It takes legitimately 20 minutes of my time, 19 of which is me sitting on my ass in a chair making sure that I don't have some sort of side effect. It doesn't make any sense, dude. I'm not saying, like, I'm saying this just because of this situation, but, like, generally speaking, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I mean, I've, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, I've, I've legitimately thought about it a lot, and I've been leaning towards, and I, I, I don't know. I guess the, and I, I guess it's a non excuse. It's a non excuse, but I'm lazy. I guess I don't want to take the effort. I've put more effort into my dumps in the last week than the effort it takes me to have somebody poke me in the arm. Right. Like, I feel like you push back just for the pushback of it. There's part of that. There is. It, uh, and, and I'm. I mean, and again, like, and I've made the, and, and I've I've made it part of my argument for a while, and. If the booster shots are realistically a necessity, um, you know, I mean, I would argue, uh, I've argued, I've argued at least that I've at least, I, I'm pretty sure I've already had it at least once. Pretty sure. But studies have shown that does not give you the ability to fight the virus versus actually having a vaccine. This has been proven. That people that have had COVID previously do not have the same ability. So there's no such thing as natural immunity. It doesn't exist in this one. Uh, it's not either. It's all on it, a it's, crazy spectrum. I mean, everyone's yeah, the, immune system is totally this different. The, let's throw this into the confusion part. Go ahead. It's not confusing. I'm, I'm trying it, to. It's a, it, you're, you're creating an, eight, an either or. Like your either or is either it works or it doesn't. Like what happens if it's 22 percent effective? Natural immunity that you don't actually have. You don't even know you have antibodies for. Right. You have no idea. So I think I had it. Well, I mean, I think I have chlamydia. Do I have chlamydia? I don't know. I'm going to fucking find out, though. 
Like if you if you really if you really think that's the case and that's actually really one of the actual reasons why you would do that, you would spend the the 45 minutes it takes to go to your doctor and have a serum antibody run. And you would know. And if you don't, then you've never had it or you've had it so long ago that it doesn't matter. So that so uh, I love you. That's fucking horseshit. Okay. Like I don't know, man. I mean, I understand why it's not confusing to you. I no, that's more relativism bullshit. It's not confusing to you either. You're a logical dude. You're fucking smart. We're fucking recording this. Did you hear that? I just said Are he we? was smart, and we're fucking recording. You're too smart for this shit. Most of the people that I talk to actually are. Is this thing on? Like, they're not dumb. They're not dumb. So then why? They're, they're, like, they're, other they're, than my dumbassery no, argument they're, here, they're, they're why? They're motivated by some sort of psychological horse shit that, that somehow or another they're sticking it to the man, that they're their own thinking human fucking being, and, like, this is some sort of, like, I am fully autonomous. I can make these fucking decisions of my own. It's horse shit. It's it's they they actually can't make the decision, which is why they're not fucking doing it. That's what it is. It's horse shit. It's something is motivating them to, psychologically to say no in spite of every fucking thing saying that they should. That's what it is. It it it's it it blows my mind. Like there's nothing confusing about this. Like I'm I'm happy to sit down and shut my fucking cocksucker. And listen to additional confusing talking points. Potential confusing talk. I, like, I really am. I'll shut the fuck up, and you tell me when you're finished, and I will respond to all of them. And I'm telling you right now, I am confident there are none. Okay. Is that a no? Yeah, that's a no. I'm okay. not going to okay. go down. Okay. I'm not gonna do it, go down the rabbit hole. I, mean, I I can't go get a shot right now, so I'm not asking you to get a shot right now. I, I I'm I, I'm I'm not, and 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 I don't know that you would get COVID and die, but I do know if you did, uh, I would be devastated. And you may be okay, but your kids may not, or Didi may not. Uh, th- th- that's the fucked up part. Yeah. For me. Right. Like even if I was just like, man, I'm healthy as a fucking ox. I'll be fine. Like, if I give it to my folks, Ava, like, dude, I'm jumping off a bridge. Like, straight up. So I'd be like, you know, that was fucking stump. That was, that was fucking stupid. So. I'll give you 20. I bet you would. You need a tickle for it? Nah, tickles <laughs> are free. <laughs> <laughs> Just for me. <coughs> So what else is going on? We're two months away from hunting season. I keep throwing land offers out there. I've seen a couple. Well, yeah. so the last one that you sent. Hold on a minute. Your house or the land? <laughs> That's a lot of money for that house, by the way. All right. No, no. Actually, we wanted to talk about this on air. So let's go with that one. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So there's a house up the street. $309,000. I agree. It it's, sounds it's, like a ridiculous amount of money for that house. It's a lot of money. But the inside's I'll, gorgeous. I'll say that much. But they, I mean, they've renovated it pretty well inside. Did you? Uh, did you go through all the pictures? I didn't go. Through yeah, hell yeah, dude. They look, it looked good. Actually, um, it looked, really did. It looked good. Like, there's no way to get that garage right, though. That's fair. Where they were, like, there's no way to get the outside to make that garage like the garage uh, remodel into an extra living space thing. There's right. no way to make that outside look right. Yeah, I but agree. um, I don't think. I, I mean, I think, I think you got to bite the bullet here, man. This is my version of I don't understand your confusion. <laughs> no, I know. I, no, I get it. Because, um, I mean, okay, so there's, like, what are the factors at play here? Like, really, what are the factors at play? The factors at play here are demand, which is increasing every fucking day here. Sure. Supply, which is not even close to keeping up. Right. Um, and then interest rates and monetary issues. Yeah. I think you're, I, I, I think you've either, you've got to bite the bullet. And we probably are, and and do it. We probably are, uh, and preferably that one because that'd be sweet. Uh, I, w- I mean, I'd much rather live in the nine one nine for real. Like I, I, I enjoy, we enjoy it over here. It's it's um, it's it's Knoxville enough that um, you're close to stuff, but it's also kind of it's uh, county. Well, yeah, that too, but it's also mm-hmm. community. It, like it's small community enough that I don't, you know, what I mean, like I, I so I, I, I don't think I'm gonna ever live anywhere too far from Butler and Bailey. Like I don't shop there like for full groceries, but I love having Butler Bailey right there. I love that shop. I love that grocery. I've never store. been in there. 
Really? Yeah. How the fuck have you... Okay, anyway. Sorry. Uh, um, <laughs> like, I would... I, so I like the feel of Rocky Hill. I also actually kind of like the feel of Halls, but the problem with Halls is Broadway. Right. And like, it's, I just can't fucking deal with that traffic. Like I, like, I just can't do it. And then the argument is, well, Kings of Pike is bad. Well, not really. Like, if you take North Shore, you can avoid Kings of Pike completely. Right. So, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're up there, you know the ways around it, around Broadway, too, to be fair. You can get around a lot of chunks of that. I mean, how? Cedar Lane? Cedar Lane's bad. I mean, I mean, depending on where you're, I mean, depending on where you're going from A to B. I mean, if there's... you're going, if you're going halls to 640, I mean, sure, you could take Emory, but hell, Emory's bad, too. Yeah. So it's about I... to get real bad, and then it's theoretically going to get better. Are they, uh, they're expanding? redoing the, yeah, they're, uh, well, they're redoing the whole Emory, uh, 75 interchange. It's going to be, uh, like, uh, 407. Repaving all of North Shore oh, right now. Really? Yeah, like the, that, that big loop, that split sort of thing where like huh. where you drive on the wrong side of the the, the bridge. That still freaks me out. I've done it's it a weird. lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Um, but um, yeah, I just don't. I like. I think for 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 Knoxville at least, I think on the grand scheme of things, yeah, I could see the market settling down into something more reasonable. I don't think Knoxville's going to do it for a while. I think it's going to be like like uh, what was the joke I I sent in the text? You're gonna be on your like third or fourth kid. Uh, yeah, fifth kid. I think yeah. that's what you said. Which is in, probably true, actually. Right. You're gonna be on your fourth or fifth kid by the time the market settles down. And by that point you're gonna be looking at a you know, a McMansion. Well, yeah, but honestly, what well, we'd we'd almost have to buy the condo next to us and then just knock the walls out. Right. Because I mean, yeah, there's not there, there's well, so buy a duplex, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh so the lady friend uh, got the, the, this great idea of, of getting a little, a little kiddie pool just to sort of you know keep her contained in because you know she's crawling all over the place and walk and like like furniture walk and all that shit. Uh, but like it's fucking massive. It's like the size of this room, and so it's in the living room. And so you walk <laughs> through the fucking front door right now. We've got a fucking little kiddie pool without any water in it, <laughs> with just a bunch of fucking toys in the middle of the fucking living room. And I walk in, I'm like. I tried to give you like two baby gates, and she said no. What did she say no? Yeah, uh, she should have said no. We need them. Yeah, I was like, we're getting rid of where we were cleaning some shit out of the closet or out of the garage, and I was like, I got two baby gates. She's probably asleep, and when I when I get home, I'll ask her about that because that <laughs> should not just too proud. We fucking need them. Maybe she's that's what. Maybe maybe, maybe she thinks that you actually need them, and no, we hundred percent need them. <laughs> well, too late. They got they went to that car center. Where are your couch is gonna go? Never. Oh uh, yeah, I need to get rid of it. You want a couch? You want a couch? Possibly. Free, hundred percent. There's nothing wrong with it structurally. It's just a le- it's a leather couch, and some of it's peeling on the back. Uh, it, it's comfortable. It, you can put like I'll I'll even load it into a truck for you. <laughs> yeah, you will. <laughs> I'm a hundred percent. Will it really fit in there? Yeah. You have to stack it with a little couple. Let, couple let me of, see if I got some pictures. Couple of, couple of, well, yeah, lift gate. Yeah, gonna, the lift gate will be down for I'll sure. I'll see if I got some pictures. Lift gate uh, will be up for sure. You can hundred percent have it, dude. I'm gonna take it to well, any anywhere. It doesn't matter. Where. It's been I'm like three like, weeks. Like, we've been trying to get the roommate now. We've just had like there's a he bought like a Sam's Club or Walmart kind of couch. Oh, this it, is an Ashley Furniture couch. It's there, but this, this thing's. This is an Ashley Furniture couch. Yeah, I'm not fucking around with that. It really is. Well, the you housing know market. Guy. I mean, like it's been up for our, our where we're living now has been up for sale, and we've had a few people like nobody this week, but nobody's come to look at it. In like a week or two, but that's all. I mean, that's buying a house to be a landlord. That's different. Let's see if I can find a picture in here. Somewhere. Because that's it. That, I mean, that's it. People like we've got this like standalone garage. And apparently, the last people that came look at it, I guess one of the daughters was like, "Oh, I'll turn that into a tiny house." And it's this garage. It's dual level, but it's falling apart. Right. And I'm like, you'd have to do so much to like turn it into a tiny home. But I mean, with the way again, with the way like for that, it's for your place. It's a, I mean, it's a, it's an investment property. That's a different, that's a different conversation because I guarantee you, your landlord is asking way more because he has renters already in it. Yeah. That's a different, that's a different animal. But for a single family house. Well, I want to say most, most people that have come to look at it, I think are looking actually to buy it outright. I mean, the I mean, they're, they're probably like kind of see. They might be looking at it to buy it outright and then sublet the, or at least the, your how your half of it they're not going to make it into a single family home i think most people have have thought about it's more like parents buying it for their ut kids to stay in there for a while maybe i don't know i just think like your place i think at best it's going to be somebody who lives upstairs and rents downstairs and that's some people looked at as well or is 
buying it to rent it. a family with a an older right the in law uh, suite parent they want for lack yeah. of a better word yeah so they can be like you know right there either upstairs yeah. or downstairs from yeah but again I, I would assume your landlord is well, asking a but different the housing price. market as it is I mean but your but your landlord is asking a different it, his concept of price is a different price I'm assuming it's a him excuse me that was rude um, that's a different concept of price than I have a house I'm selling a house to somebody else All right you know like <laughs> if I owned if I own this house and I had a, a but I didn't live here and had somebody renting this house, right? There's it, a, it, I'm going to put a different, a different price, price point, right? I'm going to put put a different price point on that house than I would. I'm selling this house because I want to get out of this house, right? You know, which not that much, not a ton different, but a, a, a significant difference. Because I mean, there's a there's a whole bunch of tax implication differences. Cause, there's legal. I think there's something in like I'm, I'm hoping there's something in place. I'm pretty sure there's yeah, something in place. Like once you sell it. They, you, you still have to honor the lease of the previous. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And that's the thing. That's what they're, your landlord's Even selling. Even then, like in the grand scheme of a, you know, multi $10,000 house, isn't going to factor in as much as. But um, no, you're, I mean, your landlord's selling a, a in. A few that, grand in rent. But your landlord's selling in that you have a portion of the mortgage already paid by somebody else. Right. But not that much of it. But I guess, again, going back to the original point is I think. I don't think Knoxville is going to change housing market. Not for a little bit, yeah. For a while. At all. We're, we're, we'll end up having to get someplace that we're, um, in our minds at least, settling on because at some point you got to buy the bullet. Yeah. So. I mean, how long has hey. it been? I mean, you've been looking for 18 months? Two years? Uh, like the the real conversation like started happening. Like probably. looking at places. Uh, I mean, what the way? I mean, it's been we're we're probably, running on probably pro- probably eighteen months, right around the time she got pregnant. Okay, so we're running on what two and a half years since the wedding. Uh, yeah, yeah. We and we were kind of looking, but like we started. I mean, we had we we've had our realtor now for eighteen months. I mean, we we've had her so long that uh you know like we haven't paid her anything yet, and and she's not as she's she responds, but she's not as responsive. Right. Which I understand. I mean, you know, we haven't paid her anything. I mean, our our realtor got the same way with us. Like, yeah. And that was back when the housing market was terrible. Mm-hmm. And we got lucky. I mean, really, we did. We got super lucky. And, I, and again, but I think I think for you specifically, one of the things that I think's real, like real, real in the in the in the grand scheme of conversation, I think one of the biggest things that's going to push the housing market back down to reality is going to be interest rates, which is going to come out as a, probably a wash. I don't know if it'd be a, I don't know if it'd be a wash though because I mean if you have a decent enough credit score and let's say 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 you go from you know two and a half to four percent I mean that difference of even if you just say it's two percent that difference of two percent the housing the, like all of the houses is higher than two percent over the course of thirty years like you, a lot of these houses are are like fifteen twenty over asking which is already twenty percent over what it was right but that's five also years ago. but that's also assuming that you're going to go all thirty years on your mortgage too. Which we wouldn't. We would probably pay it off before then. Right. So I mean, that being the case, we'd still we'd still save money. Either way, right. So I, I you know, I, I'm not. I, I just don't think that's. I, I don't know. And and again, I, I think with Knoxville as it goes, as it continues to go, I think at the end of the day, in probably what twenty years, realistically, you're going to sell the house anyway. And you're gonna you're gonna well, you're gonna make money on the it. The longer conversation is we may not sell the house in twenty years. We may have the have the house and Ava may sell the house because we rent it out to somebody in ten because eventually I don't want to work. Right. But I'm so, just saying, like either way, yeah, you're you're getting sure. out of that's not your house anymore and you're going somewhere else sure. right. in, in fifteen, yeah. twenty years anyway, regardless of whether it's paid off at that point or not. Right. But the way the market works at the time, you're gonna have you're gonna be in a place to because I mean that's kinda where we're at. When the kids get out of here, I'm not I don't have any I have zero desire to stay in this house. Like when the kids are out, it's like, nah, we're out of here. We're gonna go get a fucking condo or something small or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um but you know, I don't know that I'm gonna sell the house as much as I just, you know, like if I can rent the house because it's mm-hmm. paid off mm-hmm. and that rent can pay most of my new mortgage yeah, or whatever. Sure. You know, that, why would I sell the house? I mean that's that's the I I guess that's one of those things that um that I don't know that a, I don't know that a lot of people actually really think about as far as like that's the real wealth game that we play as people. Yeah, you can it's sell it. You, you can only sell it once. You can rent it forever. Right. 
So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Right, especially if you own it out. It, like, if you got it paid off, you own it outright, all you're paying is property tax in Knox County. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, you know, just the occasional repair. Right. Like that sort of thing. So, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, beer and smoke outside? Well, I mean, I, th- I think it'd be a, at least a little disappointing to not at least close the show with all three people there. Well, uh, he's got to get his hand up his dick. <laughs> well, I mean, th- it's been that way for two hours now, so <laughs> that's never going to happen. That's funny. But uh, so Max made seventeen hundred dollars. Apparently. Oh, we should call him. You want to call him? Real yeah, quick? fuck it, call Let's him. It. I mean, hell, it's in the afternoon over there, right? It's uh, what time is it right here? Uh, it's like four hours ago. Uh, yeah, it's fucking seven thirty. He's probably right. eating. Right. Well, he's probably always eating. <laughs> I got you know we went out with a four wheeler the other day. I had a fucking tick on me, dude. Really? Yeah. I was um um, I was I was explaining to Sam how I rebuilt the room, mm-hmm. and the intent was so that Max in that chair, when Sam's in his normal chair, mm-hmm. can get up. And not have to cross wires to go to the bathroom uh, with his prostate issues and whatnot. Max has prostate issues? No, nah, I'm just, he's old. I'm just making old jokes. Jesus Christ. Ha, 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 ha. I know he liked the prostate massage. I didn't know he, he mm. had prostate issues. Nope. Shit. Oh. Oops. That was a warning call, Max. Yeah, do we even ask him about calling in? Yeah. No. We're, we're just calling. doing it anyway. Okay. If he doesn't it's answer here, a, I'll call him on my phone. I mean, too. it's it's earlier in our. Phone's ringing. Oh, you were gonna call him? Hell yeah! Yeah. Yeah, we we just we just said. We just, yeah, we just there was there nice. was a guy with his hand on his dick, and we were I like, was, why don't we just call Max? I was I was wondering, yeah. <laughs> nope. Uh, we Hi, you've reached reach Max. If he answers your phone, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> If he does, they hand it to me. I can hook it up to the thing so it actually works right. I'm at the craps table. I know I won't be able to hear a thing you guys are saying. Hold on a second. Hold on just a second. He won't be able to hear a thing we're saying. Hold on a second. Hey. Max. What are you doing? How are you going to answer his call and not mine? What the fuck? <laughs> This is worse than that time when you were in Florida. Oh. That was funny, actually. Oh, so now that's, we get a video kind of, of what we can't see. That's kind of what it sounds like. Is he FaceTiming it? Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, I could probably figure out how to put this on YouTube for us, but I'm not going to try to do it. Well, yeah, then you... Have you left that fucking bar the whole time you've been there? Is that Fremont Street? Yeah. He said when he picked it up, he said, I'm probably not going to yeah. be able to hear a damn word. Yeah, you saying. suck having a good time dick we tried anyway um that was max from vegas everybody um going on uh taking his employees to uh vegas for a bachelor party yeah that's nice hurts my feelings that he fucking answer your call not mine dick move anyway um so uh last day of primaries oh actually we'll close on this um who are you voting for in the primary yeah ac Mm -hmm. Who yeah. are you voting for in the primary? I don't even know who's running. Are you part of this show at all, people? Yeah. I am. What district are you in the city? Uh, same district as... Uh, what is her last name? We, we've had her on before. Um, Johnson. Uh, no. Yes. False. Gloria Johnson? Yes. She's not a city. Uh, she's not a city candidate, and uh, in the, the, in her in her state is house of reps. Is, is this a is this a gotcha moment? I think this is what this uh, is. I think that, I think it is. It didn't. Uh, I didn't intend it to be. But I, I I I told you I don't know who's running. I thought it was pretty clear in the beginning. Well, you sounded like you did. I said I don't know you're who's like, running. Yeah, but you're not in Gloria Johnson district either. I actually am in Gloria Johnson. District. No, you're not unless you're he voting was, from your parents' house. He was I technically am. speaking truthfully. So truthfully. If you're voting from your parents' house. Your parents' house in the city. Yes. Then you're voting the same district the same as. Okay, well, thank he, you. I he is know, in that district, but just for a different race. He wasn't speaking dishonest. You haven't registered at this place? How long have you lived here? I've never registered at any place I've ever... It, like my, my 
driver's license, which is yeah. apparently in the car. You don't need to You don't need to show me. I believe. Yeah. You. <laughs> no, no I've, my mailing address is my parents. One hundred percent. I've never put. I think it's. I don't get. Well, I, don't, I take that back. I get uh, what mail do I get over there? I get uh, health insurance mail there. Uh, but as far as the state's concerned, I live South Knoxville. Okay. If it's always been like that, I've never changed it. Okay. Well, then you have um, Tommy Smith. Okay. Um, David Hayes. Infield. Or it's nice. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> are, we, good. are we in the same district? I'm yeah. Playing. I mean, he's South Knoxville. His parents live uh, like two miles from you. Oh, but damn. Um, or uh, Elizabeth Murphy. That is so. I've seen that thing. That is so funny. Every time I drove by. Which one? The most recent one you just said. Elizabeth Murphy? Yeah, it's just funny. What uh, what what have you seen? No, I don't. I'm... Just the, every time I see the sign, I think it's funny. I like I, I like the name. Okay, I'm confused. I'm easily confused, obviously, as we've mentioned earlier. So here are your candidates, right here. Look here. Those, those are your candidates. Are you kidding me, Max? Yeah, we we had the whole conversation about it. He well, ha- I wasn't. He here. hates anybody that like, that that is named Elizabeth Murphy, which. It's easy to hate her because she likes to drink pee, but that's a whole separate conversation. Likes to drink pee? Yeah. <laughs> it's she's a she's a homeopathic person. Anyway, uh, these are the three candidates right in front of you. That looks like Hayden Field. That one? <laughs> yeah, totally. It looks exactly <laughs> like him. Um, you have David Hayes, Elizabeth, Mur- Elizabeth Murphy, and Tommy Smith. Okay. Um, I encourage you I to really vote. Did, I really did. You should vote for that. Elizabeth Murphy, even though you shouldn't because of the max part. But okay, it'd be interesting. I'm, I'm curious. Tommy Smith's getting through. I'm pretty sure David Hayes is getting through. I, I, realistically, in the primary, that my 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 um, my strong prediction is that Elizabeth Murphy is not surviving the primary. Okay. So Tuesday, you have to go down to where's your where, where's your voting location down there? Uh, Mount Olive. So you got to go down to Mount Olive, and you'll have one. You'll have these three names on the ballot. You get to pick one. I do know how to vote. I don't. I mean, I, I, just because I don't know the candidates doesn't mean I don't know how to vote. I voted at Mount Olive Elementary School, honestly, the entire time I've lived here in Tennessee. Well, the entire time that I voted, I've always voted at Mount Olive Elementary. Okay, well, these are, these, these are the people you get to pick out. Okay. So, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask. I have none. Okay. Well, those are your candidates. All right. I'm going to vote based on a picture, clearly. That's not true. White girl. It's cool. It's fine. I get it. No. I'm not going to. But no. I mean, realistically, if 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 I want to go past predictions, I think Tommy Smith's winning the seat, but okay. that's a separate conversation. I'll vote and leave I'm waiting. All. I'm waiting until at least Wednesday before I do my general predictions. I'll leave it all blank. Gonna leave us on the edge of our seat here. That's right. Stay tuned next week to find my predictions. Well, I mean, I didn't. I mean, we're primary. We don't have the generals not till November. So why would I get the fuck out of here? The generals in November. Uh huh. That was sarcasm. I do know that. Okay. Well, let me ask. You, when when is the county general? I have no idea. September? No idea. I don't hide the, the like the things that I don't know. I don't hide. Okay, I'm just saying. Next just saying, year. like we like like Next the whole year. premise of the show, like went from like us, us fucking around to like local politics is a thing that's important. Sure. And I've like I've fallen obviously like way deep down the rabbit hole. Um, and I think it's weird. So next year, we have a some county and state stuff going on. Um. In so, the fall, do I? Yeah, in the fall. Well, sort of summer fall. Um, the county primary is in May. The county general is in August. The state primary is with the same August ballot, and then the state general is in November. So we have multiple elections next year. I don't. I. I. I and again, you're a perfect example. I would argue that ten percent of Knoxville, Knox County understands the way our elections work. I would argue that that same number is a national number for their local their No, local no, because no, I, I, I think you could, I think we could walk out on the street anybody, anywhere and say, when do you vote for president? And they're going to say November. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying that, that, uh, restate what you said. 10% of what? I'd say 10% of Knoxville, okay. Knox County. Okay. Understands how elections work. Okay. And then I responded by saying that that is no different any other local area. That's what I was trying to say okay. across the nation. I'm now, not saying, now, I'm not, given, I'm not, given I'm not, the specific of local area, I, that, I'll, that's I'll, what I'll, I'll I, didn't, I didn't mean federal election. I just okay. meant like if you go to fucking, uh, I don't know, Des Moines, Armpit, fucking Nebraska, it's the same issue. 
Yeah, it's to, it's to the <laughs> east. You can look it up if you want to. The, the Des Moines arm. The, there's a Des Moines, Nebraska. Uh, De, that was. Or there's an armpit, in Nebraska. Yes. Okay. All right. The answer is yes to both of those. Okay. Actually. Well, that sounds like a show. Sam, outro. Nope. So my new running joke apparently is trying to get Sam to do the outro for me. I tried um, once. I tried once. We'll try again. Come on, you can do it. You we're, can do it. We're almost in agreement. Almost in agreement at Facebook.com. Fail. We're also on YouTube. Yes. We're on Instagram. Nope. We're not on Instagram. We are on Twitter. <laughs> yes, we are. I'll start the Instagram account. Okay, so we're about to be on Instagram, apparently. All right, so almostagreement at gmail.com if you want to email us. Uh, we are on Facebook. That one thing that is like the one thing. Uh, we're on Twitter, and we're on YouTube. We're also on the World Wide Web at... Almostinagreement.com. Yeah, what can you do while you're at Almostinagreement.com? You can like us, you can share us, and you can also look at the local election <laughs> breakdown of our... Yes, yes, you can. Almostinagreement.com slash elections 21 You can get that whole breakdown we've talked about a couple times on the show tonight. Um, when you're on any place, uh, whether it's your podcast provider or anything else, like, share, subscribe, any of those things, whatever it is that you can get us... Uh, more traction, more people listening, more things to do, more things. Uh, GOP's last night. Good night.